All right, the stream should be up on both Twitch and YouTube. So uh, lower latency on Twitch, better graphics, better quality video on YouTube uh, due to transcoders and all that, all that stuff. So what are we doing today? Uh, today we're playing New Cycle. So New Cycle is coming out of early access in, or coming into early access, sorry, in five minutes on Steam. Uh, if you don't know what New Cycle is, I actually made uh, a video about the game and released it just about 30 minutes ago. So if you type exclamation what in either of the live stream chats, you'll get a link to it. If you're watching this later on VOD and you want to check it out, then just go to my YouTube channel, Adam vs. Everything, uh, and you'll find it there or or search for what is New Cycle on YouTube. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do a brand new playthrough of it and show you guys what the game is like. I put in probably about 20 hours all together uh, of the game. So, all right, let's uh, let's open it up. And um, I didn't stream any of it, obviously, so the volume might be kind of crazy. I am also going to do a giveaway of the game, but um, uh, I've been working with the, the developers on this and um, on the stream and video and whatnot, and things are that's for some reason minimized my YouTube chat. I'm not sure why. Um, so anyway, the giveaway is not ready to go. It was supposed to be ready to go by the time the stream went live, but just keep an eye on it in the description. So, so. Uh, you got done watching the what is video? Great breakdown. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for watching it. Oh, I'm on the... I'm on the uh, brand new um I wonder if I'm not able to open the game for four more minutes unless I go back to the beta beta branch I wonder if that's what's going on I don't know I wouldn't doubt it I'll try to launch it more time but we might actually have to sit here for four minutes <laughs> or I might just have to load the beta branch but I, I would I don't want to load the beta or alpha or whatever and why does this keep minimizing my friggin' YouTube chat? That's very odd. This game has something against YouTube chat. There it is. Now the bot's connected uh, on YouTube. It just takes a little bit for the bot. I don't know. It's a cloud-based bot, so... All right, let's try this again. Thanks for introducing a new game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh-oh, it went to windowed mode. Four minutes of marbles. Ask me special questions. All right, it's here now to on YouTube, but what's your favorite green food? Favorite green food. Well, let's go with pistachio ice cream. Does that count? Not a heathen. Pistachio ice cream. Some green eggs in my ham. That's a great green food. Yeah. It's, it's, some would say the best of all time. Compare broccoli to pistachio ice cream. Come on. Come on. I actually, do, I actually do like broccoli. But it's not a comparison to pistachio ice cream. Let's be clear here. What about mint chocolate chip? Screw mint chocolate chip. Pistachio. All right, let's go. Play the first impression is that it seems like a Frostbunk Banished Hybrid. Uh, yeah, it is a, uh, it is very much, it is very much a, uh, Banished or Anno type game. That show Coffee Creamer. All right, let's go. Uh, brand new game. So, uh, these ones are not available yet. I was actually able to click this in the alpha client, but it still wouldn't load, so. Um, talking about grain foods. Well, they typed green, so. We're going to do a brand new campaign. And, um, right now, you can choose from three maps. There will be a mountain map. Um, right after that... Uh, again, I go over all this and explain all this on the um, on the what is video. So if you haven't seen that yet, I just put it out. Exclamation what in either of the chats will get you the link to that. Broccoli and ice cream. Rakes food. Finished. Uh, we, we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Yeah, thank you for coming in. All right. Uh, we're going to go with metal. Meadow. Metal. That's right. Meadow. So the meadow is, um, is generally the... That's interesting. They've changed this since the um, the beta branch. So uh, initially, Tundra also gave you 30% less meat. But um, anyway, we'll go with Meadow so I can just uh, show you guys the, the basics of the game. I'm going to play a little bit different, I think, than I have in early access. Metal. I'm getting ahead of myself. There will be metal, though. All right, let me know if it's too loud, too quiet. We'll get it. We'll get it toned. Tuned? We'll get it tuned. All right. Whoa, they've changed this already today in the release one. All right, so interestingly, we now get to choose where our starting camp goes down. So the video that they had me put out is already wrong right off the bat by saying you start with a camp. So uh, we are going to start with the camp. 
Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to go in here. And uh, I'm on 4K. My monitor is way over there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here. And they've done something really good with the UI scaling. When you start scaling the UI, it minimizes so you can actually see what the crap is getting changed. Wow, what what a great concept. I don't know why other games don't do this. It's really nice. I hate it when I have a game where I have to keep adjusting the percentage. Put on zero. <laughs> keep adjusting the percentage and then like going out of the menu and back in the menu. So, all right. Uncle Jay, thank you for the 25 months. Thank you, Uncle Jay. Uh, let's put it at super size. Why not? All right, there is a 0.1 speed mode. But anyway, we get to choose our location now. We've reached this unknown land after a long journey. It seems isolated and safe. We hope it'll offer enough resources for a new start. Choose the most suitable spot to settle in the area and guide us to set up our base camp. Let us begin. Let us begin. We actually get to place our main hall. Interesting. Uh, so there is quite a bit of stone right there. Lots of trees. The mines are over here, but it's going to be a while before we get to the mines. So I think I'm just going to set up right near all this good resource area. So works for me. Ruins the surprise. <laughs> Ruins the surprise of how large or small your UI is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, and I might end up moving my camera over to... We'll see if I'm blocking too much. Right now, I'm only blocking part of the bar that's telling you that spring is coming. All right. All right. Uh, so we'll just put it on this. Yeah, I figured that was coming. You are now the governor of this little community. It's been nearly half a century since the first solar flare. In the initial moments of the catastrophe, we lost our entire technological infrastructure, our means of global sourcing, and almost everything that we can share as a civilization. The following years were humanity's darkest. Having to wrestle with constant improbability. They were still wrestling. They're still wrestling, R squared. In despair. You know what it means? From battles fought with sticks and stones to nuclear wars, we ended up destroying ourselves what little the sun had left for us. And civilization fell. Read a sky god. <laughs> the, the governor sounds like Sarah. Everyone here was born into this new world, and you have to be their leader. Our current flimsy shelter can't carry us far. We must rebuild everything from scratch, with the effort of those who remain, so we can establish a sustainable way of life. What is this, the commandments being read? We need to rediscover, rediscover our knowledge and explore our surroundings and create new possibilities. Most importantly, beyond merely surviving, we have to find a way of securing our next generation, by whose time the world may not be habitable anymore. We don't know how we can preserve life as we know it, but we can at least help build something that we may call home. I'm not doing the tutorial. I've done it like five times. I suggest you do the tutorial if you're starting. Do as I say, not as I do. Alrighty, so right off the bat, uh, we're going to go ahead and get a field camp down. This is a juicy one too. Look at that, juicy. Juicy. We're going to put this in range of a bunch of stuff here. And there are two different build modes, so you can build on the grid. Or you can hit tab at any time and you can just build however you want. So if you want to build things in crazy circles and just dot in wherever, or if you want to build like my RimWorld bases and just have everything on a grid, uh, the world is your oyster. All right. So we're going to get the first gathering camp as well. Looks like we got some mushrooms nearby. So we'll put this to be able to hit both of those mushrooms. I'm going to put it down here a little bit. Storm again, 40 hours less a week. Good storm is great. Yeah, I'm going to play some more of it for sure. There was, a, there was an update, a 1.1 update this week uh, to against the storm. I'm looking forward to that as well. All right. Uh, we also need to get wells. So here is a little tip for if you are playing. If you put a well to pull from multiple water sources like this, it can't pull from them all at one time. And wells are passive water generation. So I highly recommend trying to put wells where it's only going to hit one uh, source of water and then do that a bunch and then it will allow you to um, to overindulge your citizens early. And I'll show you what I mean by that once we get this roll in here. Uh, and I'm going to get another field camp down so we can gather all these pretty quickly. Creation developers have put into the user experience. Yeah, and the UI is really nice too. Oh, like... If you haven't already, check out my uh, what is video. 
Exclamation what will get you there, and I go through a bunch of the UIs and stuff as well. It's and you'll see them as I play today, but it's uh so really nice, yeah. Really nice. You just watched it, thank you. Thank you for watching that. It's a new type of uh video that I've been trying, so uh, another cool thing about this is uh you can change the day night view at any time. So if you want to see like what your settlement looks like with all the the lights on and in the night, you can just do that anytime. Unlike things like City Skyline, where you have to pay just to see what things look like at night. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the first city, city Skyline is good, to be fair. But, man, having a DLC that literally all it does is show what your city looks like at night. It would, it would almost be like you having to pay for blood in a game, right? <laughs> Warhammer. Alright, uh, let's get our... Yeah, there is going. It's funny because I bought the Blood DLC every time. <laughs> I bought it for Warhammer 1, 2, and 3. I wonder why they keep I wonder why they keep selling them. I don't know. I can't figure it out. Alright. Mushroom collecting. Okay. Uh so this icon, so there's different if you hit alt, you can do different overlays. Uh product will show you what the current building is is producing. Working will show you how many workers are in there and the maximum that it can have. And warning will show you any kind of warnings on the building. This warning is that it is not connected to the road. Connecting to a road just increases productivity. No CS2 for you because no 4090. You'll see it doesn't affect the age. Yeah, I know. I, that's... I, I know, but they could still give it as a free DLC. So I, I know... I know Creative Assembly's reasoning for it is, well, it'll keep the... Keep the mature rating down on the base game. Next time will be the last time I build a uh, buy a blood DLC. I promise. All right, so we're going to get a little. I'm going to build differently this time. I'm going to build just in big, just big long roads of the same thing. Let's see how that goes. I'm, I've never done that. I've played probably four or five of these, and I have never done that. Yeah, I don't remember empty page to be honest with you. I was mainly joking, but I don't remember. All right, we're going to get a lumber mill down, and I'm actually going to put two of these down. I'll show you how production works once those get going. Those get going. Let's watch. How's the sound, by the way? Is it too quiet, too loud? Let me know. I haven't streamed this before. I've played it a lot, but haven't streamed it. Advanced Banished vibes. Yeah, it is very similar to Banished. I think the most similar would be a cross between Banished and Anno games with a little bit of, like, Frostpunk decisions. If you trade it for a Banished 2 game, oh, yeah, you you definitely go further in advancement than Banished. 100%. We'll be to friggin' flying machines and... Uh, this is considered a diesel punk game. So you get to diesel and then they do all kinds of incredible things that you probably... Re re well, not probably. You wouldn't be able to do with diesel, you know? So, uh, Xvade, thank you for the 12 months. Thank you, Xvade. It's almost full calendar year. Diesel punk. All right, so we're going to go ahead and choose a production. Right now, we can only make lumber here. We're going to get that going right away. And then over here, same thing. We're just going to get lumber going. And the next thing I want to do is I want to come into our research. And we need to research the kitchen, but we need 24 uh, lumber to research how to make food. Not Vin Diesel. Uh, I've never played this on stream. Nope. Never played this on stream. I played similar games to it. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get a feel of what the game is like, um, especially like progression, I did make a video that I released today uh, with the developers, Exclamation What, Exclamation What, uh, on either of the two live chats, or if you watch this later on in the description on YouTube, I uh, will get you. Add errors to it? Yes, let me, uh, let me show that. So part of the reason why it's called New Cycle is the cycle progress. So there are eight cycles. You get all the way to the Age of Cold Steel, which is after New Metropolis. This game eventually gets to heavy automation as well. So you'll have conveyor belts and uh, semi-automated factories. Um, I can't go to it right now, but but as we get scouts and everything out in the world, you'll have uh, routes of trains that are semi-autonomous that are and, and other settlements that are feeding you material. Um, we will have learned nothing from our past apocalypse, and we are going to absolutely have this map devoid of natural resources and need to pull from other other places 
Yeah, a little bit of Factorio. A little bit. Um, it's more close closer to the Anno Banish side of it, but it definitely has some elements of both like Frostpunk and um, and like Factorio. All right, we're going to go ahead and research the soup kitchen. And we're also going to start throwing down roads to connect these. Uh, anything connected with the main hall has more, um, more production. So we're going to make sure that we get all this connected. Even wells, which are automated things, get more production by being connected. So we're going to make sure we connect. Uh, so as I was talking about earlier, you can do the uh, road on a grid, but you can hit tab on the road placement and you can make curves and stuff as well if you want. So if you like making S curves and roundabouts and making it look more organic than a big grid, you can do that. It was a solar flare that destroyed the civilization. No, that was the spark. Civilization did destroy itself. Baroque noir music. Cause you to wishlist this game, kind of reminds you of the furthest frontier, the beginning of the city building looks. Yeah, yeah. So if you play things like furthest frontier or end zone or stuff like that, any of the modern city builders, you're going to see some uh, similarities just, just, you know, based on it being the same genre even. So. All right. Uh, so we're waiting on the kitchen research there and we have 13 free workers um so i'm gonna go into workers here and right now we can up their morale by giving them more water so we're gonna get them regular water and i'm gonna do what i was talking about earlier i'm gonna put wells down and just collect excess water so we want a well connected to each individual one uh highly recommend this this ends up being more efficient i don't know they'll probably change it but in my experience, this ends up being more efficient than the water pump you get at the next stage of water production uh, because each one just takes no work, no power, and just pulls from an individual well. So pretty good. All right, production, soup kitchen. Uh, we're going to put the soup kitchen. Yeah, we'll do everything in its own row. I've never done that, but we'll do everything in its own row. So we'll put a soup kitchen there. I'm lying being closer to civilization. Well, yeah, kind of, kind of, yeah. Start is music in spring summer it should be more light and inspiring. You know, I I think I've been spoiled a bit by Rimworld, especially Rimworld with uh, P music. Lately, every time I try one of these games, the music is good. The music is fine, but every time I try one, I'm like, man, this game could really benefit from a P music mod, <laughs> like every single time. Uh, I need more stone production. We're getting very little right now, so I'm gonna put one of these way up here. Man, this game needs P music. So, P music slaps. It's so good, yeah. So good. So, I really need that stone. Uh, we've been using the stone pretty quickly. So, we'll get another stone collector up here. We have the, the spare labor. So, might as well do it. Color flare, flamenco moments. So, again, you can have this where the product thing isn't popping up. I like... Switch between product, working, and warning, depending on what I need to, to keep an eye on. So, like, they can all be pretty important. All right, we're going to get three more stone cutters going up there. Those just need road access. It's not a big deal. We really need that stone coming in. And let's make sure we're researching. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, oh, this is another thing. So, in this one, the happier uh, your workers are, the more knowledge you gain from them. And... Knowledge is not a resource. It's not like a commodity. It's a break point in this one. So in some games, you like spin those points in order to unlock things. They work as a as a break point, as a uh, as a as a gate, I guess, for for certain researches. So uh, especially when we get over here. But you, know, you see, like 385 knowledge. So we're not smart enough to learn how to build a shack yet. I help you cope with the. Waiting for Frostpunk 2 a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's been good so far. Good. I'm really um, curious about when the scenarios come out. So this is this hit early access 14 minutes ago, and uh, they do have planned um, some scenarios, kind of like Frostpunk, kind of like uh, Banish has some of the certain scenarios, and one of them is actually a defensive scenario. And in the screenshot, you can see like. Uh, cannon set up like like futuristic cannon set up around the um, the main hall <laughs> and I wonder how that's going to work I don't know if like that's going to be part of the main 
like sandbox mode eventually where you have to defend lose all your knowledge or town collapse again i don't know if you can lose knowledge but i would i would guess so oh, six research benches in a room without flooring i don't know i don't know i'll have to wait and see all right so uh we start out with the soup kitchen later on you'll have access to more meals and more recipes right now though we're just going to use mushrooms and water for soup and we're going to put four people in there cooking we currently have six free laborers so we could get more uh production up in fact i'm just going to go ahead and put a another resource gatherer over here to grab more mushrooms and then our next goal will be to get the houses researched get people housed New game, brand new game, just came out 15 minutes ago into early access. Very, very fresh. Uh, Shambler, thank you for the 32 months. Thank you, Shambler. This is a kitchen that looks like a bowl of soup. Does it serve soup? Yes. <laughs> right. Hey, haven't really heard of this one. Yeah, yeah, just hit early access. If you type exclamation what, uh, you'll get the video. Here we got some, some visitors coming, some foreigners. They could want to trade. They could want to join us. It could be some other event, so... We'll see. Um, I have to mention that uh, yesterday while I, was, while I was getting the video ready, I got an event from visitors that I've never gotten before. And it really reminded me of RimWorld. They showed up and it was a slaver. I was really, I really needed more labor and a slaver showed up. And like the paragraph was like, this is terrible. Are you really going to buy slaves? And there was different options. I did not buy the slaves. I tried to free them, but uh kind of soup this is uh just mushroom and water group of strangers they want to join us so plus two workers will accept that for sure house is almost done uh and we'll build the houses out this direction too yeah let's get the roads ready for the housing roads don't actually need laborers interestingly enough to come build or anything does take resources all right so now we can build our shacks a shack houses 10 people unless they changed it uh, once you get electricity you can run electricity to the houses to make people happier but that's going to uh oh another uh quality of life thing if you want to build multiple things you hold shift hold shift oh i accidentally put that in the wrong spot that's all right we can just get refunded for it Hold shift while you're placing something and whoops <laughs> and then don't hit that button um I meant to hit R okay there we go all right now we'll run that up once we get resources man we're really uh low on stone low on stone the game does have some good music but like I said it really could benefit from a few more tracks or some uh some P music uh, very, very unique name, very unique name. Okay. So what do we need to get to the next cycle? We have 25 complete structures in the settlement. Oh, we're starting to get achievements now that this is actually a released game. Uh, so we have the population we need. They actually lowered this. This used to be 40 until today and we just need 700 knowledge. So that's good. Or to keep people happy, they either need a fighting arena or funny pills added to the food. Man, I gotta tell you, I, I go over it in my what is video a little bit, but it is pretty funny. It's it's pretty accurate probably too. How quickly people go from, oh my god, we're so lucky to be alive. We just we just survived this apocalypse. Oh, we have we have food, we have mushrooms and some venison. Oh my god, I'm so happy to be alive. To very shortly after being like, you know what? This stuff sucks. I need beer, I need drugs, I need a pub, I need entertainment, I, I need better walls, like, your people start to get needy. Just like in most of these games, uh, the more progress you get, so, it's it's not long they go from just mu mushrooms to wanting to live in a metropolis, so. To be fair, I probably wouldn't be very happy living off all this stuff anyway, but. Uh, how are we doing on the stone gathering? Let's go into the um, product one and we can see here. Okay, we're good there, but this needs to connect to a road. 
And that one's not gathering stone. This one's gathering 14 a day. Okay. Pie and biscuits, take it or leave it. Yeah, we are against the storm. Maybe some humane meat. Yeah, I'm really curious what all other events they're going to add. Because, uh, like I said, I had never seen that slaver event. I'm not sure how rare it is. But when it pops up, I immediately... Oh, crap. I completely forgot to put down a stockpile for storage. I immediately thought of RimWorld, of course. So yeah, I'm going to build differently than I normally do. I know you guys probably haven't seen how I normally build, but I'm going to put everything in just big, long strips. <laughs> so we like green incoming. All right, we're going to go in here and we're going to put meals to medium. We want to try to up the morale so that we can get better efficiency when they do work. This is early access, yeah. This game has been in development for a few years, so they did develop it pretty heavily before it went to early access. Also, the publisher um, definitely has a lot of games out there that are are successful, so it doesn't. It's not like a no-name publisher that you're gonna have to worry about. Oh, I don't know. What's some things that happened in recent times? Stealing, stealing your money and canceling the game. <laughs> oh my god. What was the name of that game that did that just recently and the developers literally disappeared? And um, you can't get the game anymore. People are selling like access to the game now for like $500 or something. Can't remember it. I don't know either. It was just a couple weeks ago. I didn't, I didn't get it. Was it day before? The day before we stole your money. Yeah. Scam before. Crazy. Crazy. All right. Now we have storage. There's a lot of things to go over too. So up here... I'll share for a Deponia series. Yes, yeah, Deponia is one that they, uh, which I think my wife has played that one. I haven't played them, but I know they are um, good sto little story games. Um, so up here, you can right click on anything if you want to track a certain thing, or you can click on this menu and track everything, which can be a little overwhelming, especially early on when you don't have that many resources. So there's our worker efficiency or morale right now, 30, not great. Not that dude who made the YouTube content on beatboxing cartoons. No, I didn't see that. Let's go on, creamy. Uh, you you found me through against the storm. That's awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, uh, I'll be back to against the storm. I, for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I'm surprised that someone found the channel newly from against the storm. That's awesome. Did to check out Twitch? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're playing another new game today. Uh, if you type exclamation what in the chat, I just put out a video on this game uh, explaining what it is, kind of like I did with against the storm. But yeah, I wasn't expecting anyone to really uh, find me through against the storm so it's pretty awesome that was just a game that i was like i'm gonna play this game on the side because i really enjoy it whether it gets me new viewership or not but so it's kind of cool to know that it gave me at least a viewer at least one all right uh we're just gonna go ahead and work on getting these roads set up roads are pretty important because it increases uh efficiency so production what i commissioned for 50k willem Willem, thank you for the 10 gift subs. Thank you, Willem. Also very much appreciated. Thank you, Willem and Cal. Thank you for the 12 months. There's been quite a few 12 month resubs today, which uh, incidentally is almost a full calendar year. Uh, thank you again, Willem and Cal. Playing games are fun. Ostrus. So we are getting so much water with these few people. This is one reason I like to do this because we can go in here early and we can give them, like, either extra or double. I'm going to give them double. We got to keep an eye on it, though. Thank you, Cal. Sim, thank you for the nine months as well. Looking forward to Frostpunk 2. Yeah, yeah, I am. It's been a while since I played the first Frostpunk, but I am looking forward to it. All right, we have unlocked the means to get meat, leather, basic tools, make iron, fishing, so on. Our unstable living standards are about to consume us. We should strive to keep a close eye on people's morale. If we don't maintain balance, we can do nothing but watch our home disintegrate. Do something to improve morale. Oh, we're already doing it. Yeah, I just literally doubled water, so that should be no problem. Thank you, uh, Dawson. Thank you for catching the stream. I'm glad you could catch the stream. All right, so... Uh, we definitely want to get to hunting, but uh, tools are also very important. And we're going to need power to run that. So we're going to have to save up um, to get a few of these things. We need we need, uh, we need stone. Yeah, stone is our big problem at the moment. I've been building so many friggin' roads. i got to cut, cut that out. Showers and rations. 
Weekly shower. Weekly shower. So, yeah, collecting stone right now. We have those up. Uh, we want to keep an eye on this. No warnings right now, so nothing's like out of resources. Do you ask it remote? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Have all, unless the question is one of those rude ones where people are like, Adam, you know you should be playing Rimworld right now, right? You have all the DC, DLC in 1.4. You want to play Blind Sight? You see that the mod Sci Sight doesn't work anymore. Blind is still available without this mod. Yes, yeah, you can do Blind Sight without the mod. And remember, you don't have to have all your people Blind Sight. So you can have a split colony. But I did an entire playthrough uh, with Blind Sight using cheesy things. But yeah, you can you can do Blind Sight for sure. But just remember that you don't need all your people to be blind sight. So you can get other ideology. In fact, you can edit the ideology of other uh, people in the world. And you can make it so everyone in the world has blind sight. So you're on an equal footing. Or you can make it so you have another faction out there that are kind of um, helpers or working class or whatever to help out with. And have your blind sight be uh, sight casting um, royalty or something. But yeah, you can absolutely do it. You should play room right now. That's not a question. Not a question. Find ways to get morale above 40. We're at 50, so we're good. Uh, there's also... Ooh. Extreme drought. So our natural resources, like the mushrooms that we're gathering, are not going to replenish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no worries. You can always ask uh, room world stuff as long... If I'm not, like, super busy doing something at that moment, I'll, I'll for sure answer. Okay. All right, uh, let's get some more of this research done. So, oh, we need 860. Ah, we need more knowledge. More knowledge. What do I think about Prison Architect 2? I don't like it, man. I don't like the graphics. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm in the minority. And not just because of how the graphics were previously, but I just am not a great... You shouldn't judge a game by its graphics, but I'm really not a fan of that, like, 3D, cartoony, almost like... I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw Pr Prison Architect 2's graphic choice. It's like, you know what? Immediately what I thought, don't build any more roads. <laughs> you know what I immediately thought? I was like, God, I hope that RimWorld 2, if it ever happens, don't, don't have these graphics. <laughs> so. All right. Um, so we definitely want to gather before the winter. So I'm going to go with another... We have workers. I'm going to grab another gather, gathering camp. Oh, God. I never employed that one. <laughs> I'm going to grab another one, though. And even if it's far away... There we go. We'll just get these gathered. Graphics, and it makes it so hard for you to play those games. Yeah, if anyone hasn't seen the World Two, if anyone hasn't seen the Prison Architect Two reveal, check it out. Let me know what you think of it. I'm not a not a huge fan. Not a huge fan of it. Like Prison Architects going 3D. I mean, the graphics are done well for that style. I just I'm not a fan of the style. You saw it and you're really like, oh no, it looks worse. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like Prison Architect becoming a mobile game? No. <laughs> Hard pass, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think that was a good decision, but I don't know. It says the famous RimWorld streamer. Yeah, I like the graphics of RimWorld. And again, graphics are a very uh, personal thing. There are people that hate pixel graphics, and I love pixel graphics. Probably um partially because of the nature of the the gaming era that I'm originally from, right? But each their own, but yeah, I don't know. There's something about the Prison Architect 2 ones that... And there are some cartoony games. I mean, Against the Storm has cartoony graphics, like Warcraft 3 graphics, and I like it just fine. But, um... There is just something... I don't know. There's something about that. We gotta get this up to 40, which I'm not sure what else we can do... Plus, I give them, like, a crap load of food. And then cancel it when we get the quest done. Different flavors of graphics. Yeah, yeah, it works well. 
Yeah, generally pixel graphics hold up much better in general than stylized graphics or um, or then realistic graphics, I guess I should say. Stylized graphics hold up pretty well too. All right, so we got, we got that. Now we want to put the food back down to regular. Almost always age valley. Uh, Storm in the new patch. Ain't the new portraits. Oh, I had I saw that in the patch notes, but I didn't look at the portraits yet. Yeah, I'll be playing against the storm on the new update is going to uh, really, really soon. OK, we're going to go ahead and grab metalworking. It's winter. Hell, fever the 30 months. Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. Keep coming. Keep coming back. Thank you. Ella. <laughs> Stardew Valley. You can't play Stardew because of graphics. See, I like Stardew Valley graphics. I like pixel art, so that's why I said it's a very each their own personal sort of thing, but so these aren't producing. I could pull them off right now, but we don't need the workers for anything else. How long until Gandhi starts launching the nukes? Good question. Any day now. Any day now. Yeah, I think I'm just going to make like rows of industry stuff. I usually don't do that, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Each type of industry is going to have its own row. I'm sure that's not going to be as efficient, but uh, we're going to try it. All right, production. We need to get the forge going. Uh, that also means we have some iron over here that we can have some people hand mine. So we're going to put those workers on there and pull one of these off. Mushrooms. I can't get the mushrooms right now anyway. So get the iron going. And then we're going to put a. Session. Thank you for the 10 gift subs also. <laughs> Thank you guys. Is there a combat aspect to this game? There is not currently. It looks like there's going to be some scenarios that have at least. Uh, defensive structure combat. But at the moment, there's no real combat outside of story combat. Uh, session. Thank you again, man. I'll have to give subs today. I appreciate it. All right, we'll get a forge up there. And, uh, AS 1998. They were the 10 months, the double digits. We've made it. Stardew is one of your favorites. Yeah, I really love Stardew. Yeah, it's a very chill game. They would chill that Stardew. All right, so we are mining some iron ore. Let's see what this person has to say. Chief, since we can now pr process metals, you can give us the means to make tools of our own so that we can see to our daily tasks. We can work without tools too, but this will tire us physically and mentally. And the more often we have to work without tools, the more likely we are to make mistakes and cause accidents. Yeah, let's do it. We destroyed the world this time. You know, people, yeah. After a mass, uh, so basically there was a mass um, solar storm event, which knocked us down to the Stone Age, kind of kind of disrupted all technology. And then that led into global war. As usual. As usual. All right, we're going to produce iron ingots. Iron ingots. And our next research that we want to get, uh, we're good on power still because this doesn't use power but we'll definitely get some things that do eat it pretty soon we um we need to get to hunting hunting is pretty important but we'll need to get our tools going for that so all right i'm gonna keep building this way i don't think it's a good idea i know i keep saying that but oh well production we're gonna get the uh the smith up there says we get nine iron ingots <laughs> this is so spread out <laughs> So spread out. That's fine. Man, tools now, humans these days. I know. And it's always right as you get. The, I mean, obviously that's the trigger of it. But it's funny because you you'll get to something like vegetable planting finally, and you'll think to yourself, "Oh yes, now we'll have soup forever." And like right after vegetables, they're like, "What? We have vegetables and mushroom and meat? What if we eat all three at the same time? We demand meals that are better like that." Like oh. Well, that sucks. Someone turn off the EMI? I think so. 
All right, that's under construction. We really need more workers. Um, again, they can't get the mushrooms right now, so let's pull them off there. And when spring comes, I'll we'll put them back on. But we gotta get this done. Yeah, but getting tools is actually a lot. All right, we're gonna make tools. We're gonna put five people on that. Upgrade the main hall. Chief, a community center made up of just a few tents doesn't feel very secure. We can build something with our resources and crafting capabilities that won't topple in a gust of wind. Let's assign resources and take steps to strengthen the roofs over our heads, though it may not please the eye. This is also new. Um, it used to, you got to like cycle three or four before you upgraded the, this at all. Anonymous, I don't know who you are, but I appreciate you. Thank you for the gift sub to Laureen Llama. <laughs> Thank you, Anonymous. Uh, Laureen Llama. All right. Tool supply. See, immediately they're unhappy. As soon as they know that tools exist again and they don't have one, they're immediately unhappy. Banishing the gluttons. It does remind me, though, I do want to get another soup kitchen. You gluttons. Okay, like an upgraded version of Banished. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to see more of it, um, again, if you haven't watched the video yet, if you type exclamation what in either of the live chats, I made a video this uh, this morning with the um, uh, sponsor by the developers that go over the game and its systems throughout, not just the early game. Uh, or you can go to the link in the description on YouTube. <laughs> Getting these achievements now. Year one is over. Uh, we had four babies, four babies this year. 37 people had four babies. Shh, why not like, like 18 babies? <laughs> All right, uh, it is harvest time, but we are, uh, we're currently going through those tools. Let's go in here and make sure, yeah, they're not, they're, they have low distribution of tools. It's fine. We'll leave it at that. Water's looking great. Lore and mortar babies. Um, lumber. We can take a few off lumber in order to um, get the mushrooms going again. Definitely want to stockpile food. It was a very dry year, so not going to get very much replenishment on those. There we go. Uh, so we just got one there. We have none over there. Also, if you leave a building empty for too long of people, uh, these guys don't have enough resources to keep going. So we can pull some out of there too. Uh, if you leave a building empty too long, it'll have a high risk of like fire or collapse and stuff. Have you seen the game Pal World? No, someone was talking about it earlier though. You can launch penguins out of a rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, someone was talking about it here earlier actually. Alright. Uh going to delay for a whole year worth it. Uh I like it so far, yeah. If you want my opinions uh, throughout the whole game, Exclamation What, I made a video about it, but um it's good so far. If you like these kind of games like Anno and Banished and uh supply chain management games basically. Babies are free food. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh it's been pretty decent so far. Uh let's go ahead and get more soup going. I really want some more visitors. We need workers, is what we need. Right now we're a little worker starved. Um let's take some workers off tree cutting. We have excess of that. And we have excess meals too. Iron ore. Let's go ahead and make another forge. Definitely eventually going to need multiple of them, so we'll just go ahead and get them started now. Crap on Power World is how Unassired its models look. Many of them are just popular Pokemon with very minor changes. It's an advantage for you. You always wanted to shoot Pikachu. <laughs> Never access meals. Yeah, yeah, you can always stock it. Also, unlike in... um 
RimWorld, mules don't go bad. So you can stockpile, you know, 10,000 mules and just, just for a rainy day. And a lot of times you might as well, right? Okay, so uh, we need some electricity. So we really got to get the power grid going. Can't make any more tools now without it. The big freezer. Your old soup. If your mushroom starts growing mushrooms, you just get more mushrooms, so it's a win either way. Good point. All right. Uh, three workers right now. I'm going to go ahead and make them create some ingots here. And then there is uh, overlays for just about anything that you could possibly want. Um, let's divide these up just to make sure this is running too. Uh, so let's take a look at the wind layer. Looks like there's quite a bit of wind down at the coast, which makes sense. And then quite a bit over here. I think we'll just use this area for our power, for our wind power. A lot of wealth. All those big raids would definitely be a rainy day. <laughs> Why is it saying this doesn't have a road? It absolutely has road access. Hmm. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe bugging? You bugging? The wells, we can make them even more efficient. We don't need to right now, though. A storm! Alright, when mills are done. Uh, How much wind power do we get over here? Yeah, it's not bad. We'll start over here. That's fine. Get a couple going. Can you rotate place buildings? You can rotate them on a grid or you can hit tab and put them anywhere you want. So not only can you build in a grid, I'll show you with like the shack here. See how it's on a grid by default and you can rotate them. Uh, the little the little nipples there where it connects to the roads. But if you hit tab, you can put it anywhere that you want. So if you want to build like more organic looking, you know, rounded streets and stuff like that, you can do that. They overlap. They overlap, yeah. They overlap. And right now, power is magically connected. So even if you don't have a road with power lines leading to your town, power is just magically connected right now, thankfully. But all right. Uh so the next thing we really need hunting. Let's go and get that. We have no free workers. And let's look at our warnings. Those are just uh, lack of roads. We do have the stone and stuff to make some more roads now, so we might as well get those hooked up. And we can always make it better later. That's my motto. Good enough for now, better later. So we're going to get the, um, the wells connected. There we go. I don't care about that over there right now. And you know what? We have the resources. So again, I'm just going to friggin' stockpile some... Whoop. I'm going to just stockpile some water. Because we don't know when there's going to be a uh, another one of those severe drought seasons. So I like putting one well per water source. Uh, highly recommended, even if there's overlap like this. Really recommend just doing for each one. In my experience right now with how the game works, you get the most for doing it that way. I don't know why, but... It was a quiet year, too quiet. The inner survivalist tells me it's too good to be true. Wireless electricity for hunting, that's right. Thanks, Tesla. All right, let's go ahead and uh, allow... You know what, I'm going to up the storage of everything. I don't care. So basically, if you set a storage limit, if they reach that limit, they will just stop producing it. So it isn't like lost. So it can be good to sit, set orders on this to like stop, especially if you have multiple, uh, we'll worry about that later though, but especially if you have multiple supply chains that are using the same material, um, you might not want to like, let's say you're using steel to make power tools, which is a thing later in this. You might want to only have a certain amount of power tools allowed. That way they stop making or stop using your steel at that number, right? 
But right now, uh, that's a problem for future us to worry about. Get spaceships as soon as possible. Test the coils win. All right. Community needs. We'll start that. All right. So let's see. We got mushrooms being produced there. There's no hunting in that area. No hunting in this one either. What about over here? No hunting there. I don't have free um, people, but I really want to get hunting going over mushrooms so we can start getting leather because we're going to need that for clothing. So let's take a look at any hunting. There's a hunting area right there. So we'll put one of these here. Maybe free up one of these mushroom places. Yeah, I think I'll do that. We have uh, we have a bit stockpiled. A dry summer. So yeah, not, not many of these natural resources are going to be replenished next year. Greetings, Chief. We are representatives of a small community. Our expeditions led us to your settlement and we have... We were delighted to see such an advanced community here. Super advanced. We'd like to barter with you and turn this acquaintance into a trade partnership. In these challenging times, every link between those who have goods to spare is a boon. What do you say? Uh, Yeah, we'll see what they have. Maybe they'll trade wa for water. <laughs> Vegetarians are year. wonder if some are demanding meat at this stage. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Let's go on. Chiz, welcome in. Witch, welcome back, by the way. Dodge Father, welcome in. We've completed the tavern, which is very important, of course. Tumblr is eating mushrooms. Very advanced. Yeah. R.I.B. and nuking the planet. Breath of fresh air, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alright, so we are going to pull from here. And honestly, I'm just going to demolish that right now. I don't want it to sit there empty and have a chance of fire so we're gonna get that meat flowing that's right flowing meat again and we'll start building that up so lumber mill is still understaffed that's okay right now we need better shelters i've already built these i'm ahead of you he wants me to build three shacks but we already have room for 40 people so oh well we'll do it one, two, three. There you go. Might tear them down afterwards. <laughs> Maybe that would be a good time to get rid of uh, that one that's currently saying that I don't have a road there when I do. I'm not sure I'm leaving place for the bar, huh? Days in a year in this game, 30 days in a year in this game. 30 days. All right, we got the tools done, so that's nice. Uh, we're at 70 on the mood, so good morale. Flying meat doesn't sound healthy, door PG-13. And we got those shacks done, nice. Ah, the warning for the road's gone now, too, interestingly. So. Okay, product looks like it's good. We're pretty good on everything. We're starting to get some leather built up. That's going to be one of the really important things to get built up, too. So as the mushrooms get uh, exhausted in those places, we'll switch over to hunting. Group of strangers, come on, join us. Yes, four more workers. Four more workers. Okay. Uh, Right now, putting them on there to turn the mushrooms into meals seems like a good idea. Yeah, that's fine. And how are we doing on the research? Uh, we have to get to the next cycle, which... We need 50 population. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get the... Um, what's it under now? Utilities. The tavern is a utility. Let's go ahead and have it cover as much of this area as we can. There we go. If you're threatened with demolition. <laughs> yeah. Sir, there's no road out there. Yes, there is. Sir, there's no road. I will tear your house down. Whoa, look at that road. Pretty much, pretty much how it's happened. How it has happened. Yeah, 30 days in a year in this game. Get that tavern done. Take a look at it here. See what the tier one tavern looks like. Oh boy, look at that. What do you think they're drinking in there? Eat yourself? <laughs> Three ponds already? It must be a speed run. 
What kind of name for the first tavern is this? Boy, they're already in there drinking too. Look at them. We'll see if they get drunk. Ah, they're fine. Oh, they're going inside now too to eat themselves, I guess. I have seen them come out of there and stag like stagger around and stuff. All right. So right now we're waiting on um, 50 people and to get some knowledge done on uh, building up stuff up here, which is good. We need to keep an eye on anything that's um, currently no longer producing. So it's like we're still good from all those places and we are, you know what? We might as well just freaking get more water. I know it seems like I'm over collecting water, but trust me, I have played four or five of these um, over the last few weeks and you can never have enough water saved up. The water replenishes when you have like a wet year anyway. So emptying all the wells every single year, even if you can't use them yet, is really good. It also allows you early on to double up distribution of water and it's an easy way to make people happy. So we're just going to keep doing it. Okay, the merchant is here. Let's see what they want. They want our meat. So bronze ingots are going to be really important later on. But it is going to be a while before, we're uh, before we need them or before we make our, our own. Um, I think there's a research that takes eight bronze ingots. So let's see how much of our meat it would have to, have to give. Yeah, not, not much actually. So, even though we don't need that till much later on, I think I'm just going to take the trade. We got a lot of food right now. They want our meat. <laughs> but they didn't want water. I'd load that guy down. I would drench that man with water. <laughs> we'll start asking him if he's everyone that shows up. You thirsty? Thirsty? A humble request. Weird flex. We rapidly evolved from a small camp to a proper village. People are the cornerstone of a fast-growing, stable community like ours. Their needs and their well-being should be prioritized above all else. Let's try to raise the morale of the workers above a certain threshold. What threshold? 70. With water. Up 70. First time to drink some one, it's very true, yeah. True. Have 50 completed structures in a settlement? Oh, it's all those friggin' wells I just threw up, huh? Can't believe I'm already at 50 buildings in this run. But yeah, see, so let me explain this a little bit again. This is a, definitely a tip for anyone that's starting out. You see how all three of those uh, water sources connect to this wooden well? That well can... It, it can, it'll pull water from each of them, but it doesn't do it at the same time. So you're still getting only the same amount of water per second. Um, and so if if that well isn't, or if that building isn't enough to pull all three of these wells dry in one year, then you might as well put down three because they're automated anyway. So I try to just put a well down like that. And then like another one like this. And like this, and even if they're not road connected to this stage, just to start pulling that water. New game, yes, time exclamation what? Exclamation what if you want uh, more details on the game. Where can you get this game? Steam. It's available on Steam as of an hour ago. It is, and uh, yeah, I, there's no fixing them. They're literally gone. I'll have to remake them. They're gone. That hard drive died. Uh, all right, so this one has no more mushrooms, so we're going to go ahead and destroy that. And we're going to go um, find another hunting spot. There's another one right there. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, they've been gone for a long time. The hard drive died like a year ago. Maybe more now. I think it would be better to rename knowledge to wisdom. Can you imagine children lowering the knowledge as they need to learn things? So wisdom feels like something... Doesn't disappear that they can like pass on. Yeah, maybe, maybe. 
Maybe that would be more apt of a name. Uh, okay, we got that. Those three workers we're going to put in here on the hunting side of things. We will need a lot of leather. So one of your first big bottlenecks as you go into, I would say, early late game is clothing and upgraded clothing. So starting to get leather collected from an early stage is very good. And then eventually you're going to be able to put down farms and croplands and stuff like that in general. And I strongly recommend going ahead and build, uh, and planting linen very early. Because you're going to need fur and linen as you're, as you're going in. Deathblow. Yes, all those have been gone for a, a long time now. Chief, our transition to settled life will bring with it dozens of issues that need to be resolved. Rules and regulations will be needed to keep everything in order and running smoothly. As our leader, it will be up to you to make the final decision. We hope you can weigh the demands well and choose wisely. To be sure that we will support you as much as we can when you choose difficult paths. However, all the decisions you make will shape our community one step at a time. Always remember the burden you bear. We almost have our daily lives in order. We have secure housing, food to eat, and duties to fulfill. We've come to believe that we're now entitled to some freedoms. We'll continue to comply with our assigned work schedules and perform our duties. However, anyone who doesn't want to get up in the morning and go to work should be able to buy some extra rest by selling his share of food or some other supplies. You should allow us to barter amongst ourselves. Surely you can give us this much. All are free to trade what is rightfully theirs. So everyone's going to have plus eight morale. But we're going to have minus five to our workforce. So work is going to get done more slowly, but everyone's going to be happier. No, everything should be regulated under control. So here's the thing about this. This carries on throughout this playthrough. So if I take this, people are going to be happier forever. But work is going to get done more slowly. So, um... So, the way that you can balance this, right, is either not take it and get happiness through more stuff, or take it, and then you can force people to work longer hours that are working, and it won't matter as much because their morale is higher. Uh, I'm going to take it this time. We'll see. I'll start with food and tools. Now they want to sleep. The nerve of these people. Maybe they shouldn't have survived the apocalypse. All right. There's also actions. So, actions are um, temporary. They're kind of like those, but they're temporary. And you spend things to get these. So, for instance, we can get a lot more work done by doing this. It costs 41 tools. They're going to work a lot for a whole year. But they're going to be unhappy. And they're going to be at risk of getting sick and dying. Um, and then you have this one, which helps, like, if there's a disease. Um, so, if you have a disease ripping through your, your place, you can use this. And for eight days, you get basically no work done. Very little. But everyone gets healthier. And their risk of dying is lower. So, as you go through the game, you're getting a lot of these actions that you can use as well. It's kind of these cooldown things that you can buy to help you through uh, difficult times. To pay them to make babies? Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, so uh, what do we need for the next cycle? We just need nine more people. So, unfortunately, we're just kind of waiting on that right now. We are stockpiling a lot of stuff in the meantime. 69 tools. Nice, nice. Lots of iron ingots getting done. Okay. Got your freelance story done. Nice, nice. Sports or... More dumb, not today. Have a promo code. I do not have a promo code for this game. It was something that they were supposed to give me so that they could track it. But the developer is behind on things, and so I just didn't get it. Um, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't getting a cut either way of the game, so yeah. You don't have to worry about going to, through a specific link. But uh, they are going to look at the stats of the stream, and they're going to look at the stats of the YouTube video. So if you do decide to wishlist the game or to buy the game, uh, if you could also at least check out the exclamation what video, maybe leave a like on it. Hey, some babies grew up. Uh, that's that's the best way to to currently support uh, the sponsorship with this game is just to interact with that exclamation what video on YouTube. All right, four kids that grew up. Nice. Nice. Uh, so the mushrooms... We don't want to put them. We can go ahead and start working on more lumber. We are going to need that in droves later on. Um, we're also going to need tons and tons of wood. Like, wood gets to be a big problem later on when you need so much paper. So I could go ahead and start chopping wood. Additional wood in this area. Um, or, like I said, leather and food. Leather, food, and water almost always is the answer, right? So, um... 
Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Send these kids out to get some more some more meat. A lot of meat over there, nice. nice. Uh, okay. <laughs> these quotes. Big town for no agriculture. Yeah, 45 people that we are feeding off of mushrooms and venison. Mushrooms and venison. We're really close to getting to the next cycle. I think that starts unlocking, yeah, cultivation. Also going to unlock uh, our first kind of specialist, a crafter. I need to stop calling them all specialists because she's at, this one is actually called specialist. So we're going to unlock our craftsman at some point. But I really like the, um, all the character art they've done too. And the UIs are just really nice and clean. Like, if you go into all these reports and stuff, like, look at this. This is a... Uh, I don't know. It just looks really clean, really nice, you know? I've played a lot of these new City Builder games, and nothing against most of them. But, like, when I compare these menus to, like, uh, End Zone, for instance, and I liked End Zone well enough, you know? It just, it just feels better and more clean. Information seems presented in an easier way if you, if you want all that crazy information, right? Like, you can go in here and say, how's our wood production been going day-to-day, season-to-season versus how much, like, there's so much. And compare it to our lumber production, like, there's so much in there. But this sounds like a nice meal. Yeah, it would be pretty good. It would get old quick, though. Yeah. It doesn't sound bad, though, for sure. You live it on much worse. And I am just filling this thing up with water, like. Filling this thing with water. Should I held down uh, shift there? But yeah, you do not have to build in a grid. So if you want to, you can, like I'm doing. But if you hit tab in the build mode, you can, um, you can have free build. And so you can you know, build uh, a more organic looking place, but. All right. We have one more worker. Um, let's just throw them on lumber production for right now. We'll get through this winter. Stockpiling meat. Okay. All neighbors of city builders, Forex games. Yeah, yeah, I've had some. I don't want to name it, but I did have one that I tried on stream where the gameplay was fine, but all the menus were like they were like this, like the gray opacity boxes with like an aerial font and nothing else. No like icons and things. It was just very. It was like if you had asked the UI developer for that game what their favorite game was, they would have told you Excel. <laughs> What's your favorite game? My favorite game is Microsoft Excel. But uh, yeah, so I really like UI in this game. This kind of nice. Yeah, this one's been good so far. Uh, again, if you want to help support um, this sponsorship, just check out the What Is video I made for the game. That's all you got to do. Exclamation What will take you to it. City Builder has more so than the others. Um, One second. Yeah, so again, the Exclamation What, if you type that in chat, it'll go to a video that kind of goes over the um, unique things about it. Uh, I would guess the unique thing I would say about this one is the cycles. So most city builders don't have... You can think of cycle, cycles almost as like age ups in civilization or in Age of Empires, which isn't um, a completely foreign concept for, for city builders, but it seems pretty rare. So the different cycles and going from the point of being like a banished, if you played banished, or like Anno 1800 type colony to diesel punk which everything is running off diesel and you have these big crazy machines um it's pretty awesome another thing that i really like think about tropico as well another thing i really like is the world map so i would love to have a world map like this in RimWorld. uh we haven't unlocked it in this playthrough yet but i will be happy to show it off when we do basically you're going to send scouts out in addition to finding like story things and breadcrumbs of that sort you can actually discover resources and set up um, mining operations and things like that that you build infrastructure for as long as you're supplying like workers and rations to it you can even build roads out into the world uh, later on trains and things like that to bring more and more resources in this game also has a bit more automation in the late game than a lot of city builders like 
there's no real automation in Vanished, for instance, right? It's it's hands-on labor the whole way through. Uh, wow, look at that, 110, crazy. Uh, anyway, this game has a lot of automation later on with conveyor belts and um, different ways to split the conveyors and automated metal production and things like that. Very well thought out since progress progression, yeah. Now, there's one thing I don't particularly like about the cycle progressions, but I guess they had to put some kind of break point. Sometimes you're in this scenario where you have way more knowledge to progress than you need, but you're just sitting and waiting on another colonist. I've been in some of these playthroughs off stream where I'll literally be at like 49 out of 50 or half a year just waiting, just waiting for one colonist. So I kind of wish it was one or the other, like get this many people or get this much knowledge together. But sometimes you will run into that where you're just kind of like sitting and waiting for some kid to grow up before you can go on to the next cycle. Like I said, I guess they had to put some kind of break point there, you know? Oh, crap. Uh, fur. We want, like, basically no limit on fur. It's going to be incredibly important later on. Yeah. World that improves the world map? Yeah, it's one of my RimWorld dream DLC things. Definitely going to pick it up, for sure. Yeah, and I think they've been developing this game for a couple years before even releasing it to early access. They contacted me and invited me to the alpha version, alpha into beta, whatever, maybe like three months ago. And it's already improved quite a bit from those few months. What if the kids come in and demand to grow up? Oh, well. Beta boy, thank you for the 25 months. Thank you, beta boy and spud man. Thank you for the eight months. Beta boy and spud man. Sounds like some kind of weird comic book duo. <laughs> all right, let's double check, make sure all these buildings uh, are working. It looks like they are working just fine. And workers are good. No warnings on anything right now, so. Yeah, we are uh, we are good there. And yeah, like I said, we're just kind of waiting on five more people. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, RimWorld, historically, since royalty, has had a DLC about every 15 months. I think 15 months puts us at about February, March, something like that. So if they're trying to keep a timeline the same as previous, which maybe they're not, if they are trying to do that, then uh, we would expect something soonish. Dazzle has summoned Sky God. It's easy to make friends with women. That's what Granny always told me. Oh no, fire! Christ. Okay, uh, full response. Yeah, we can't let this spread. So, what if fire happens? You have multiple responses. You can do a balanced response, which takes a bit of work and a bit of water but um, it's more likely to spread. You can do nothing, which is really bad. Or you can go full response, which is going to take a lot more water, but it also takes a lot of uh, worker time, so uh, worker efficiency. So basically, all of our other jobs are going to be slightly less efficient while they get this done. Let's see what the fire looks like at night, though. Nice. Nice flame animation. Shouldn't the, shouldn't the water be helping? Granny is wise. Even Sky God listens to her. Yeah, see how much water we're pumping? Good thing I got the extra. Yeah, I have I only didn't prioritize firefighting once to see what would happen. Very bad idea. Very bad idea. I mean, look at what this crap is made out of, right? It got out of control real fast. So get extra water. Put out fires as fast as you can. Okay, we're going to repair it. We actually got it put out in time that we can just repair. How's our morale doing? 35. Uh, let's put tool distribution to regular. That will help give us four more. And then simple meals we're going to put. Put as extra. See if we can get that morale up. Get this quest done. Okay. So yeah, you can see that we're still, we're going to be in, more inefficient for six days have it on a dark mode permanently yes yeah uh you can change what the time of day looks like whenever you want and it doesn't actually change the time of day just how it looks i think it's really nice so you can just you like it one way or the other uh you can also just resume resume it you can have it do it on its own but you can just set it to one if you if you want 
So we're going to put it back on. See, there, there it is actually on. And you can see why maybe you would want it off because when you're doing like super fast forward, the days are coming through pretty quick. But I like that. Unending preparation. Chief, we need proper preparation to sustain our life here. One of the most important lessons for the last 50 years has been that we can't rely on the seasons to behave as we expect. The fickle atmosphere can breed hellish heat waves and freezing colds in any geography. The state has only worsened with time. It would be foolish to expect it to get better from here. We need to stock up on our essential needs, at the very least on food and water. I think we're good on that. <laughs> this will help us cope with extreme seasonal cycles as well as whatever else pushes us to desperation. Though we can't be ready for everything, we can at least try to secure our current well-being. 5,000 water and 1,200 simple meals. Yeah, I got the water handled. No worries. So we need to pump out more. Oh, no, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Way ahead of you. Objective complete. What meat-based meal sounds good to you right now? I am a... Not really a carnivore, but I am definitely a meat eater. Um... Hmm. What, like, single piece of meat sounds the best right now? Maybe, like, a... Like a good fatty ribeye steak. Let's, say, let's take a break and have a good fatty ribeye steak. It's been a while since I had one of those. All right, let's get back to noontime. Currently eating meatballs, Spud Man. Spud Man and meatballs. Again, another great comic book uh, potential there. We're still not getting morale up to 70. I'd have to give them extra tools or extra food. <laughs> Water's at 30,000. I'm going to give them extra double rations, see if we can get this quest out of the way. Oh, I haven't had ribs in a long time either. Kebab sounds good. So yeah, we're just waiting on five people right now. That's it. All right, we have succeeded on this. So as soon as they were happy, I'm going to go in here and turn some meals back down to regular. You can see later on, we're going to get access to other kinds of meals too that have better multipliers, but are more complex, take different buildings, take um, different ingredients, stuff like that. Four tools a day. I think that's between all of them. So between 45 workers they use four tools a day. It's Yeah, it's not that each person is eating 36 meals a day. <laughs> they need training on how to use tools. Yeah, it's still maybe a little bit too much, but... Yeah. Cool mix of some of your favorite games. Yeah, yeah. So if and if you like how it looks, or if you just want to help support uh, the channel, if you just check out the video I made about this game that came out about two hours ago, if you type exclamation what in either of the live chats, it'll get you straight to the video, or you can see the link to that video in the description on YouTube or just type in what is new cycle on YouTube search. Hey, what do we have here? Oh, look, it's a baby pig. I mean, we're killing them and eating them, but hey, look, the commands are a little slow on uh, on YouTube for some reason, but it should eventually pop up. There it is. What are your colleagues wrecking four tools a day? Aw, food. <laughs> All right, uh, those are just the wells. A lot of them are dried up. That's fine. I think we're good on, good on that, honestly. Stop piling meat. Currently just making meals out of mushrooms and water. It's fine. And yeah, we are just literally waiting on five people. Now, another thing I really like about the world map when you unlock it, which, how long is that from now? Is that the next cycle? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yep, yep. So uh, on the next cycle, we'll unlock the world map. And one of the first things I like, I like to set up, uh, it, it takes workers and food. But once you get it set up, you can have um, a station, an immigration type station in, in different zones. And if they see people coming through the zone, they can be like, hey, head over to our place. And uh, population really starts increasing as you, as you get that. Diesel punk, yep, yep. Yeah, if the link doesn't pop up for any reason, you can also... Oh, there it is. Uh, you can check the description. Okay, a new merchant has arrived. Uh, they want some of our meat as well. So, but we don't really need anything that they're selling. We're just going to hold off on that. Regressive recruitment. I was going large sale. That's right. <laughs> hey, can you guys tell us where where the... 
the road back to our home is we live it's don't worry about that you now can live with us no no we're just trying to find our way back home if you could point us to the road no you're gonna live with us from now on you want to live with us are you saying that we have to we're not saying it oh who's this hey more workers are showing up nice i'm pretty sure that's what that is it's hard to know software these days and the statement still stands about breaking the working a large manufacturing plant we lost more than four tools a day there wasn't even an apocalypse ting 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 <laughs> uh yes five more workers excellent hey and that's gonna get us to the new cycle that's exactly what we needed okay uh, so this one has hunted all the meat in that area. We're just going to destroy it because I don't want it sitting empty. And then we're going to look for another place to hunt. That one's hunting both of those. Actually, three of them. So we could we could afford to put another one there. Maybe cover that one as well. Okay. All right, come on, new cycle. I think it just popped up, didn't it? Yeah. No. Specialization chief. We've accumulated a massive pool of know-how. It remains largely undirected and unrealized. We need to train individuals with more advanced knowledge and practical experience in certain fields. These people will take a specialized task rather than odd jobs. We'll put them in charge of buildings wherein they can put their expertise to use. As a natural consequence of this, their need will differ from the rest. We should begin training craftsmen as soon as we can. We need to get some standards, such as separating various fields of work and establishing the necessary qualifications. We'll start planning the training roadmap as soon as you announce the new regulation. All right, the new world calls for new training, and these will persist throughout this settlement. Craftsman training time and resource required is halved. Worker to craftsman training success, success rate is increased. More power tool consumption for craftsmen. Minus nine efficiency for craftsmen and increase the chance of work accidents or extra efficiency, reduce probability of work accidents, minus eight workforce for the crafting class, crafting training time and resources required doubled and the rate decreased. Oh man, I'm gonna go with this one though because this is like forever. I don't know. Last time I played I actually went with the top one, but I'm gonna go with the bottom. Try not to uh, have as many accidents as in my last run. What's an outdoor activity that you like? And do you have a story about it? Um, so when I was a kid, I spent uh, like a ton of my time outdoors. It was either playing video games or outdoors. And so I used to do all kinds of stuff like very, I grew up in a very hillbilly place. So all the time as a kid, I would just leave and walk and hike through the mountains. And me and my friends would meet up and go swim in creeks and things like that and explore caves that we shouldn't be in and, and things like that. These days though, these days, though, I just uh, hike when I can. I was hiking every day a little bit uh, for a while, but now it's way too cold. And another thing that I'd like to get back into that I used to do a lot is um, just shooting a bow and arrow. Not necessarily hunting, but just for fun, just being outside, shooting it into a target or a bale of hay or something like that. Uh, very good for your, uh, for your health, you know, especially for like your shoulder strength and things like that. But also uh, really fun and a way to get outside and have some vitamin D. So yeah, I used to do all kinds of stuff outside, just nonstop. But not, not super close to hiking here in Indianapolis. There are a few decent parks and um, and um, like state parks that are that are pretty good at it. But I'm not going to those right now. That's for sure. Hey, cycle three. All right, now is when stuff starts getting a little bit more complex. So vocational training is how we get the craftsmen. Uh, surveillance is how we get scouts going to, to show the world map. So we definitely want to do that. We also will get in clay and bricks, uh, mining, clothes production, lots and lots and lots of things. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the kiln, pit, etc. We'll get the world map open up sometime. Oh, I, I probably have lots of stories of, of just random hillbilly kid outdoor stuff, for sure. Little stories. Again, you went nature running until they disregarded the zones. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Excuse me, what are you? 
Oh. The traitor's still there, no? But are there enemies in this game? There are not currently enemies outside of story-based event enemies, so you don't have, like, actual raiders. But there is an event that might pop up on this map soon where we get attacked from the sea. Um... But yeah, there are things like that, but it's all like story and event based right now. However, we do have a preview of a scenario that isn't released yet that shows a building or some buildings near your main settlement um, further in the game that are basically futuristic cannons and they're shooting at something. So there might be additional defense type scenarios that are coming or at least planned. But uh, at the moment, yeah, the only kind of enemy is through that that sort of thing. Dolphins, no. <laughs> Glad I didn't get eaten by a bear. There weren't a lot of bears where I grew up as a kid. Not too far away, there was like some black bear, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't super common to see. It was much more common to see something like a a big cat, for instance. All right, uh, so we also want to get mining, but we need to get bricks for that, and we got to get paper production going. So now that we have access to paper production, do we? No, 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 I have to get it unlocked. Very important. Paper, stupid important in this game. Stupid paper. Uh, so the pit can mine stone, clay, or sand, but takes a bit of electricity. So before we start putting that down, we're just gonna throw down some more windmills. The only kind of power that we have access to right now. So we're just gonna plop. Well, we're about to have a harsh winter. So we might lose some people to uh, disease. We'll see. Or to the cold, I guess I should say. Mm -hmm. I think on food, I think I'm just going to go ahead and get... Nah, it's fine. You can always pull them out, but... It's okay. All right, uh, so pits. Let's keep putting things in lines like I have been doing. So I have a production, okay. This will make it easier to at least know where things are. <laughs> I don't think I've had that problem before, but. Go get a pit. Awakening of power. The power is yours. Mm -hmm. We could use the health policy if health gets too bad, yeah. It would give us 20 more health, which would pretty much cover this. Um, We gotta get clothing going. Yeah, right now we don't have too... We don't have people that are... Uh, you know what? Let's look at health. Health is okay at the moment. They're just a little bit over... Ooh, some of them are going under the barely healthy line. We don't have any clothing yet. Minus 20 right now. Oof. But yeah, if we really need to, we can do the uh, health action. I'll, uh, very little work to get done during it, but... Yeah, it, better than people dying, especially right now when we don't get a lot of workers in very often. All right, uh, we're going to pull clay out of this. You can also pull stone and later on sand. But we're just going to get the clay going. Okay. And then we are going to need the, uh, the kiln to start making bricks. Okay, paper. So we are going to switch uh, both of these over to paper. So paper becomes incredibly important. So not only is paper now needed for pretty much every research, but the training... I'll, I'll go over it more in a little bit, but basically when you have the boot camp and you're wanting to train people into craftsmen, it costs a lot of paper to train a craftsman and they can fail the training. And so I've done things before on this where I've spent like 3,000 paper and didn't get a single craftsman. So it, it becomes, um, if you have bad luck, it can become really crazy. 
Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but... A stream? Jokum? Watching the VODs lately, you had some bad luck with human raids. Like a wealth, etc. Bad luck. Bad luck. Yeah, they still went pretty well, though, huh? We've grown fast, Chief. Knowledge will gain more and more importance as we keep growing. As a community, we need ways to reduce and share knowledge more effectively. Our first step is to make 400 paper. Yep. We'll do that. We're already doing that. Already doing that. Okay. And then what's our next uh, step here? 90 population. Okay. <laughs> North. But north, but not north. Yeah, three is over. We had one person, our first person die. All right. Um. Oh, we had a good year, so we're gonna have. Oh, we had a good year. Next one is not gonna be great. So. Let's go, Ben. Welcome in. Your wish list has it so far. It's pretty good so far. Yeah. If you want my full thoughts of like the the full game, including like the mid and late game, uh, I put out a video just a little bit ago. Exclamation what? If you type exclamation what and check out that video, it also helps support the stream. Just watching that video. Uh, check it out if you have some some time. All right, uh, so I need to pull some workers. Food is not really concerned right now, so I'm going to pull some off of that kitchen, and we're going to start making bricks. Making bricks. Then we need to get to clothing. Very important. We need 850 for that. Can you rotate the buildings? Yes, you can rotate them. I'll show again. So there's two things. So one, by default, they're on a grid, but you can rotate them. And then if you hit tab, you can freeform anything you want. So if you want to make circles of buildings and roads with curves, you can do so. I'm just building on the grid. That's the default, but you can hit tab and build however you want. Uh, or on the grid, you can also rotate. Still a little bit different than what I normally do on this game, but uh, so far it seems to be all right. All right, completed our paper thing there. And so we really need to get to weaving, which is 850. 850, okay. Uh, yes, there is fishing. Strange lights, oh boy. Chief, it's just like the stories of the first day. Even the night seems to be losing its darkness. For a few days now, the sun has been shining brighter and stronger. Today is the seventh day of these events. And if our guesses and stories are correct, we are about to experience the same scenario once again. There is nothing to do but wait and simply watch. Wait, what is that, uh, Boomer? Uh, but yes, there is fishing. We, we actually have already unlocked fishing. And there are maritime events, but I don't know if I've seen any maritime trading yet. I've been attacked from the water. We saw it with our own eyes. Half a century later, the same disaster is upon us again. We're not as fragile as the modern world that faced the first one, but we're sure it will bring nothing but harm. When and how, time will tell. There's nothing to be afraid of. How are we not as fragile? It's an MMO because there's fishing. <laughs> Chief, if we want to build a future in the nameless land and make it last, we'll need people more than anything else. That's very true. Let's aim to increase our population to 100 people within the next four years. The sooner we achieve this, the sooner we can become a self-sufficient and healthy community. I agree. Let's do it. When will I start the new Rim series? After the edits to the Mechanitor are done. So probably late January, early February for the new themed run. However, at the moment, I'm doing standalone runs on Sundays. Less dependent on electricity. We're pretty dependent on it. <laughs> I mean, there's friggin' power poles everywhere. House pattern. Yeah, you can upgrade the houses eventually, too. We'll get that done. Uh, 
yeah, I, I kind of didn't notice. Yeah. It just so happens that that's how the square roads end up. You don't have to build them that way. I, di I didn't even notice. That's not good. <laughs> but anyway, maybe I should have rotated them differently. Why did you have to point it out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never noticed anything. But anyway, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't look that similar. Yeah. And as the houses get upgraded, it won't look like that at all. Are you Edgar's? Pretty games getting enough people that you can keep doing variety streams. Not really. I'll have to go back to Rimworld full time for sure, but hopefully I can squeeze in more variety occasionally. Indefinitely? No, definitely not indefinitely. Yeah, thank you, Edgar's. Uh, all right, 850. That's right. That's what we're waiting on. We're almost there. Upgrade before you get canceled. Uh, we don't have the upgraded houses unlocked yet. There we go. All right, clothing. Nice. Put that down here when we get it. Uh, those are just the, m the wood harvesting, right? Meat still going. See, I've had playthroughs of this where I was really struggling for food and water. So if you think I'm overproducing, there's a reason for that. I, I am. But I have learned my lesson. Like, previously, I was just putting barely more. And then an event would happen and just wipe us out. So I'd rather have all the basics done and have people a little bit unhappy and progress a little bit slower, but just have like a stockyard full of friggin' meat just in case. Okay, more paper again. Okay, uh, the tailor is the first building that can use craftsmen. I'll explain that as we get one built here. We don't have any craftsmen to use there, but... Here's that electricity for how to weave clothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's like room rolled that way. Dreams live variety. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't... I It's... It's a job, but a fun job playing Room World, right? So I'm not, uh, I'm not upset by it, but it would be nice to be able to play more variety for sure. But I get about a third of the numbers with variety than, than not. And then, but it's not just about the numbers. The thing is, I get so much less from like bounties and sponsorships and, and everything else. Um, Like it's, it's, uh, tr it's not a th one third of that. It's way less, it's like a tenth of that kind of stuff because um sponsors and advertisers and twitch and all of them they base everything on uh concurrent viewership and it's like this exponential increase instead of like, this linear increase all right uh so we want to start getting clothing made where can we pull some workers off of right now oh let's see what's happening here first we're sure it was a solar flare what little information we have from half a century ago is barely of use of us or to us all the sources traces source traces and our current state suggests that a second wave of catastrophe awaits us we may not have to lose right now but we'll this will determine the fate of future generations yeah thank you session and i don't i don't fault anyone like i don't say this i, I don't mind talking about it when people ask and things like that but I, I try not to talk about it too much because i don't want people to um to take it the wrong way but uh, I'm the same way with certain streamers. Like, there's certain streamers I only watch for certain games, so it's not, like, upsetting. I'm like, why won't you watch me play anything? Uh, I absolutely get it, for sure. We think that our technological assets are too primitive to be affected by such a solar storm. However, we don't know what the impact on the planet, climate, cycles, atmospheric structure would be. In short, we can't say how life on Earth will be affected. One cannot build a settled life and community based on good intentions and guesses. Instead, we can try to make sense of what's happening and what could happen by regularly observing changes in our environment, especially in the atmosphere. We ask you to assemble a task force to carry out these duties and give us the necessary time and equipment. A two year task, which will have periodic need of us supplying them with stuff. Okay. Hey, Variety Channel. Uh, I, I already tried that and that was even worse. Yeah, it was even worse. <laughs> The thing is the time spent doing it, right? Like I only have a certain amount of time to do stuff. So even even variety stuff on the main channel earns way more than variety on the second channel with no one there. Hear from Granny, you don't care what the game is. <laughs> Lumber iron, we're gonna need glass. Okay. Oh, dang it. 
water world yeah paper uh dirt shells for some reason water world okay we also really want to get to mines we're gonna need more bricks for that um cultivation can wait we're doing pretty well but uh getting to mines the mines be really important clothing is coming now or will be coming now i gotta figure out where i'm gonna pull people from um i mean food is really good let's pull two of those hunters off and i'll talk about the uh specialists a little bit or craftsmen i should say um i'm also going to turn this uh no we don't need the extra lumber yet definitely need that going still uh we have way more ingots than we need right now so let's go ahead and pull people off that one okay so certain buildings will allow you a slot for a specialist or multiple or a craftsman or multiple and doing so will increase the efficiency or workforce of the building so basically make it produce more uh later on though there are buildings that will not work without the one of these roles or both of these roles in it depending on the building the first really big building that won't work without a craftsman is the coal generator uh and the workshop those ones you have to have them in there and uh, as you progress as you get more things certain like i said certain buildings will require a mix of these and some will require just a, a specialized only but yeah, we're not quite there yet get your daily memes world streams put in the backgrounds yeah and that's the case too like a lot of people that have been here forever are, are kind of sick of room worlds you know there's people that um were became regulars to the stream during darkest dungeon and it's been like since i've played a lot of actual darkest dungeon one like a lot of it, it's been like four years and some of those people are still around and they just lurk and uh, and tell me occasionally that they're waiting for the day that i'm not playing room world <laughs> but but yeah i understand it they they also understand that you know gotta do what i gotta do sort of thing okay um so we are saving up to get mining. 12.30 on the paper. It's going to take a little bit. Really need workers. Currently having a dust storm here. Sandstorm. Plus work getting done. Uh, I'm thinking... Oh, Christ. A lightning strike fried the whole friggin' lumber mill. That's unfortunate. Did anyone die? Uh, Theo died. I was talking about needing more workers, and then we have people die. Man. A sad day for all of us. We're no strangers to death, but this is the first time we've encountered it since we settled. Wait, what? I thought someone died last year. And it hurts even more. Theo Riley died due to c catastrophe. Yeah. Darude and spies. Go on, Nathan. Hello, hello. Another merchants. We could trade meat, but again, I'm just going to keep stockpiling because I know it's something that we're going to need a lot of later on. Uh, well, it's unfortunate. Could I have prevented? No. Not at this stage, I couldn't have. Now, there are a lot of difficulty settings, so you can uh, ch you can alter the difficulty in individual ways. So if you like the game being a very hard, just um, as far as like the people and the uh, the supply chains and stuff like that, and you don't like the random disasters interfering with it, you can turn all that stuff like super difficult, and then you can turn the disasters off or lower if you want. I'm playing as the default for those things, but you can customize every... Hey, some kids grew up. Uh, you can customize like all the things as far as the difficulty goes. Try our show severe setbacks. Roll first, Dark Stage 1, original melee only. Yeah, I don't know, man. I yeah, I don't like to say it in that sort of way, but I feel like at this stage, I know so much of the RimWorld that it's hard for me to lose if I'm if my only goal is to win. If my only goal is to win, it's very hard for me to lose without like some kind of extreme bad luck or extreme like um self-imposed thing and even then that's just the nature of dissecting the game over time i suppose 
It's going Ash like. Welcome in. Come in. All right, so we got more people now. We definitely want more uh, paper coming in so we can get our research done. So we're going to put those on there. Uh, we also need more bricks. So let's go ahead and switch this up here. And how are we doing on... Well, not well. What are we even using? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, we'll put two of them on there. Uh, clay production is staying ahead of the brick production right now, so that's fine. Uh, tool production, we need more on that. Okay. Am I doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah, that are cold here. Yeah, it has been here too. Yeah, I understand that graph for sure. Chief, we know we're in no place to make excessive. Have to take Jemmy back to the vet. She has asthma and the medicine they gave her is wearing off. I don't know if you can hear her like coughing. Sorry, right, Jimmy. Always makes me sad because she has no idea what's going on, right? It's like when a baby's sick. Poor Jimmy. Poor Jimmy. Uh, and anyone's wearing Jimmy? Her? Uh, it's short for Gemini. Gemini. Jimmy. Gemini. This is a fundamental issue. Community health is deteriorating to the point that we may start losing many of our fellows soon. What? Malnutrition? I don't think so. Hygiene problems. Okay. Harsh seasons. Uh, all right. Go on. Go on. Working out in the cold without proper clothing is also hazardous for the community. So he wants us to make clothing. Maintain health for a certain number of days. 30 days for a year, basically. A lot of that's going to be um, through clothing. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, we ended up taking her. It's been about a year now, and they did x-rays, and they showed where they ha she has, like, these has mud like spot things in the lungs, and they gave her shots of medicine and stuff, but it's like it's time to go back. Oh, Jimmy. All right, um, so mine is the next thing. We need 12.30 on that. Uh, we'll just keep one of those up for now. There's the technical boot camp. I don't, we have a quest to do it, so I might just get it done. There's the health already done. I think we had a quest, right? Yeah. I think I'm going to build it, but I'm not going to use paper in it just yet all right boot camp we'll put that right next to this starter building now oh, i'll remember where it is there's also a hotkey to go to your starter building just h we'll, we'll send you there uh, blue owl welcome back oh she, she outgrows it no she's not gonna grow, outgrow it she's like she's 12 so i wish i wish hey eight more workers nice 20, 30, 40, 50 60 70 we have exactly enough houses let's put one more down just so we have an extra and i'm gonna make sure it's not turned that way but this frontier it's the same genre yep so it's gonna be have similarities to that to banished to anno to frostpunk to end zone all those things it's the same genre so kind of like um you know kind of like seeing like back in the day if you if you saw like donkey kong country and you're like this is pretty similar to super mario you know they're just the same genre there's gonna be similarities there are some unique things with it too uh if you want to see more about it explanation what will take you to a, a link a video i made uh just checking out the video will help support this the channel but it also goes over like some of the similarities and differences in those other games there's a lot of colony survival games now it seems yeah yeah absolutely jaybird thank you for the five dollar donation this is for the kitty. Jamie, you got a donation. She's asleep again. <laughs> thank you, Jay. Prot, they were the 17 months also. Thank you, Prot. Yeah, there are a lot of them now. Um, and so the ones that are better kind of rise to the top and become kind of staples like Frostpunk did. But uh, I do like this one better than End Zone and Furthest Frontier altogether. The cycle mechanic is kind of nice too. So you go from like a banished... Like backwoods sort of thing. I'm gonna go ahead and make another lumber mill to uh, like futuristic diesel punk things. 
Diesel Punk. Okay, they are still gathering there. Okay, we're good. And then we have a little bit of excess workers now. So let's go to the working tab. Um, those back on. Anonymous. Jimmy, you got another donation. <laughs> Anonymous, thank you for the $50 donation. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, all of our cats have been named after constellations or stars or things like that. Um, so her full name is Gemini, but all the cats have nicknames. My wife give, my wife and daughter gives all the cats like 10 different nicknames. So Gemini very quickly became Jimmy. This is Jimmy. Uh, I think you're anonymous. I don't know who you are, but I appreciate it. But deaf guy, welcome in, by the way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make planks here. And our clothing production is pretty low, especially because we don't have any specialists, but... Here's what I was talking about. Like, if we want to try to train a specialist, five tools, 200 paper for a chance at getting one. And right now, with paper being so valuable for research, I don't want to do that. Really need to get mining going. So we'll get that researched. And uh, in the meantime, I guess we'll throw these workers in the soup kitchen. So they're doing something while we're waiting on... There we go. We're waiting on that. Research. Jimmy has no idea that she just became $55 richer. It's crazy that I could be at like 100,000 water now if I just increased our storage. But there's no, probably no reason to. All right, almost done with mining. So, uh, one of the bottlenecks is going to be tin. And it seems like tin, at least on this map, is a little bit rarer than the other two metal types. So we're going to look for getting a mine down of all three metal types and eventually coal. And as we get uh, further along in cycles, we can even automate some of that with conveyors and stuff eventually. Okay. Basic mine. Uh, the other thing about the mine is at this stage, you don't know what material is there. So you have to put down a mine and then do uh, some surveying to see what's there. So there's three different chances to hit the things that we need here. So I'm going to put one up here. And this will definitely want to get a road to. Okay. And then let's go ahead and analyze these deposits. So the mine can work without craftsmen, but putting two craftsmen in there up to two makes it much more efficient. But as we get excess paper, we'll worry more about that. So iron, we already have quite a bit of iron, so I would love to find one of the other minerals instead. Is there travel time for the people or do they just magically work there? There is, yeah, here they come. Nothing beats drinking beer after a busy day. Working at construction. Nothing beats drinking beer after a busy day, she says. The first thing this person has ever said to us. We are the great leader and we show up and we're like, Howdy. I like beer. You sure you sure do. She's not wrong. <laughs> Mining 101. Chief. We now know enough to be able to build our first mining facility. In order to access the rich resources under the surface, we need to position these facilities carefully and begin digging mine shafts to reach whatever uh, we can reach. It's funny that I'm telling you guys this before the pop-ups come. Uh, only once these shafts have been dug can we say for certain what minerals are in. Ore veins are usually found in the mountain slopes. All right. Yep. I'm already on it. Already on it. We're analyzing this one. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, as you were. Copper. All right, we'll go ahead and start uh, working on the copper then. So we will pull the four X or three extra we put on this. Uh, we're also adding mushrooms, so we're going to switch this over to making meats. Same thing on this one. Use the meats. And...
Uh, yeah, we probably want to leave a few of those on there. Always need more workers. Always need more workers. All right. Five on there to start with. And then... We don't have the ability to smelt it quite yet. But we'll get it. We'll get it mined. To fat crew. Be safe. I was, I was actually going to say something to you earlier and I completely... Something happened in the chat. I'm going to blame chat. I completely uh, forgot about it. Uh, we need more power. I'll remember next time for sure. Okay. Still only have wind power right now. Getting to coal power is a cr so crazy. Like, as you're adding wind power, you're just getting very little bits at a time. And then as soon as you get to the cycle that you can get coal generation, your power goes from like being in the like double or low triple digits to instantly being like 7,000. <laughs> Crazy. More wireless power. That's right. Well, a day, not too bad. And I've been playing solo Mechanitor after Arcanexus phase one. No, that run finished. Yeah. I played the entire run. You can, uh, if you want to see it read, the the edits are still coming out. But if you want to see the full unedited version, if you go to my YouTube channel and click live, you can see the entire Mechanitor run. But the edits are still going. It's just that the editor was away for a, a few weeks for holiday season. And so the edits are quite, quite behind. But the run itself is over. But um, yeah, you, you can watch the whole run if you if you don't want to wait on the edits. Just by clicking on the live tab on uh, on YouTube. Uh, disgruntled Al. Thank you for the gift sub. Who'd you get? Starfield for 25 months. Thank you, Disgruntled Al. I wonder if people want that name. Uh, Starfield had that name before the game existed. Oh, that it's yeah. So more of those are on the way. The other editor just actually sent me a couple more. What? I already built... I built a basic mine too soon. So it's not retroactive. So to finish that quest, I need to make another one. And then I guess we can just get rid of it. Because I don't have the stuff to... Man a second one right now. Uh, so, yeah. I guess I'll throw it down. As close to home as I can, so they don't have as far to go. Finish the quest and get rid of it. Four more days of the Darude Sandstorm. Uh, let's look. Any of these products running out? No. How's the meat production up here? You guys are still good? Yep. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next themed Rimworld run will start after the Mechanator edits finish, but until then, um, on the weekends, I'm doing, like shorter runs. I'm actually thinking about doing a different kind of speed run this Sunday. I haven't 100% decided yet. What do you want? Our settlement has begun to resemble a village. We're not a group of wanderers looking to scrape by anymore. Though it feels as though our new way of living means working constantly, we can't hope to endure a life like this for too long. We need to think about adjusting our shifts to allow us a day of rest... New work schedule, one day off every nine days of work. Extra knowledge gain from all classes, extra morale, minus 15 to our workforce production. Or just keep working every day. Ugh. Um, <laughs> our storage is getting full. Knowledge gain will help us get through the cycles faster and get our research. And later on, when we get more automation... We're going to wish we had this instead of the other. What, one day off every nine. So needy. You just survived an apocalypse. Work until work until you die. Why did I survive? This is... We all ask ourselves the same thing. Anyway. Uh, our sword is getting pretty full. We're going to throw down a couple more of those. So weird building this way. Seems to work just fine so far, though. 
I like how they just... Look at this guy pulling that cart. Oh my god. Friggin' lady. I guess I might as well connect this well. Alright, how are we doing on all the materials? We're still kind of not great on clothing. We have plenty of fur, so getting another tailor down when we have some more workers would be a good idea. Um, Alright, for research... That's what we need to get to. We need to get to the furnaces. I'll take the next cycle, though. So let's go ahead and get these other researches done. We could also try to train a craftsman. Uh... What is going on? Why are you producing zero a day? Oh, we have so little... Because of the breaks and the barter rights, this one person doesn't have enough labor to produce any soup. They did well. It was nice. So we have such debuffs from this right now. Everyone's happy, but he has such debuffs that he's literally at work and he's like, ah, I just can't do it. I just can't make this soup. I just cannot bring myself to do it. Uh, uh, all right. Anyway, we're going to see if we can get one of these guys turned into a craftsman. Hopefully we get lucky. We also have the passive right now, like this cornerstone type thing that makes it so craftsmen uh, have a lower... or Workers have a lower chance of becoming a craftsman, which is unfortunate, but... Give me smoke breaks. It's like you're in the game. <laughs> Train is a crappin. What trade would you go into? Hmm. Not sure. In real life, I was going to become a craftsman of like, um, like a contractor type craftsman. Uh, maybe electrical. I don't know. Ah, uh, that sounds kind of bad too, actually. Not sure which one. I've done a little bit of electrical work. I like in that kind of level. That's some pretty uh not great situations. I'm not sure. Probably wouldn't go into plumbing, that's for sure. I remember when I was a teenager I had to crawl under a trailer and help someone with a bad connection to a septic tank line or whatever. And after that experience I was like, yeah, I never want to do this again. So uh yeah, I don't know. Carpentry maybe? Affliction, no soup. Try to find out. You're not an electrician. Hey, he made it. We actually got one. Nice. So we're going to throw that in here. That's going to up that to from five a day to 16 a day. Wow. Nice. Drinking. Bruno? No, I'm drinking something much better. I'm drinking anime girl thigh. Machinist, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. House flipping. <laughs> All right, what do we need for the next cycle? 90 people, okay. Anime girl thigh, it's so good. It's orange creamsicle, so good. Exclamation drink to get your own or exclamation thoughts if you want to, not that thoughts. If you want to get my thoughts on the brand and flavors and that kind of stuff. I've been drinking the pina colada one almost every day, but today, going back to the classic anime girl thigh. Yeah, not that thoughts. <laughs> I should make that a command, though. Yeah, we're kind of just stable at the moment. Uh, we got 70 people total. Need 90, but we can't really um, do anything about getting more. I, I'm going to go ahead and get the Scouts Guild made. But I don't think we have the means to really set up any world level stuff. Even if we explore it. Uh, until we get food rations. Thoughts on anime thighs should be private. <laughs> what is that clip? I have a sweet six pack. Yeah, yeah, I tried that one too when it was re-released. That's one of the ones I 
I haven't there. My favorite out of them so far. But yeah, use code Adam if you do shop from there. There's a new cup coming out tomorrow. I'm not allowed to show it. They already sent it to me. There's a new cup coming out tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, if you use code Adam, it supports the stream and you get uh, you get a discount. Um, but my favorites so far are Anime Girl Thigh, Pina Colada, uh, and then Snake Oil and Grandpa's Ashes are probably tied to third for me. There's a lot of good ones, though. It doesn't taste diet, which is what I, what I really like. Orange Creamsicle. There should be more Orange Creamsicle drinks in the world. Yeah, so at the moment, we're just kind of waiting on our production or uh, our population to grow. In the meantime, we can't really do much more. I could go ahead and start scouting. We could also go ahead and start working on kill yard stuff, but like, I don't have the workforce. Okay, then caffeine. Yeah, I that's something I um I have a list of things I want to suggest to them, and one of them is I really think that they're that they should have a caffeine free sample pack. Because um I have about half and half. I have uh, quite a few caffeine ones and I have a lot of uh, decaf ones. And there's no flavor difference between them. It's one of the things I was worrying or wondering about. But, like Mod Wife can't have a lot of caffeine, for instance. So we, uh, we have both. They're going to make an Until Dawn movie. That's kind of cool. Aside from the fact that I'll know everything that's going to happen. Hey, Grandpa's Ashes is really good. I was surprised. It's, um, it's a raspberry cream. Raspberry cream. But yeah, <laughs> it does sound weird. It's, um, it's my wife's favorite. And so, therefore, it, it's become normal now. But there, for a while, it was very odd because... Don will come. Um, it was very odd because she, she'd be like, where did I leave my grandpa's ashes? And we would laugh about it. And then, she, and then she'd be like, have you seen my grandpa's ashes? Did I leave it on the shelf in your room? <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely don't need any of that. What a name. What a name for a drink. But yeah, uh, the cup I'm using is a... Oh, new cycle. Never mind. All right. Hooray. We made it. Oh, we had some kids grow up. Nice. Think any of them became cowboys? So we can get the better houses. Uh, the maintenance building. Insulated furnace. We need to get that one. We can start making wire. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So we're going to go with the furnace first. Does it have aspartame? No, it doesn't. Yeah. So if, if you watch my thoughts video, Extraction Thoughts, I go over all that kind of stuff because I hate diet tastes. And this one to me is one of the few um, no sugar drinks that don't taste diet to me. And part of that is because they don't use aspartame. Okay, we're going to need a lot more power. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw these down ahead of, ahead of the need. Back when my wife and I switched from drinking uh, caloric drinks to, to zero calorie, we went through and we bought probably like 150 different kinds of drinks over the course of a few weeks and tried them all in, in comparison to see which ones didn't taste like diet. And uh, there was only a few of them, honestly, because I really hate the the diet taste. And I hate the mouth feel afterwards. A lot of them make my mouth feel dry, even though you drink. Yeah, one of the only sodas that tasted like the the regular to me was Dr. Pepper Zero. So that's like the only soda I drink now. Sprite Zero, those two. The rest of them I did not like the flavor of. But yeah, these are, are really good. And it... These ones, uh, not counting the deal, are 40 cents per serving. So much cheaper overall for me than what I was drinking before. All right, we have unlocked the smelter. Now we need to save up some bricks again. It looks like we are going through our um, clay deposits pretty quickly. These extra workers, let's make sure we're throwing them. There we go. Run them on these places. Um, and we are out of lumber, so we need to get that going again. 
With these new mouths to feed, we also need to repopulate the soup kitchens. And that. Diet drinks are making you thirsty. <laughs> okay. So we now have unlocked the smelter, but we need wire to make it. So let's go ahead and switch these over to copper ingots. We have plenty of iron right now. Just got to remember to switch it back. And then we really need to unlock wire, which we need. We need those ingots to, to unlock. Okay. Uh, and this building, we're going to need another one of those in order to make the wire. So let's go ahead and get this going here. Uh, and then I'm also going to put down another lumber mill. A specialist ever come through? Yeah, yeah, we have them working in this and it up our clothing production from 5 to 13 per day, which is really nice. Oh, sorry, the Exclamation Thoughts thing is not a command on YouTube yet. I do have some commands set up on YouTube, but not all of them. I need to get that one moved over. I think Exclamation Drink works, but I don't think the Exclamation Thoughts one does. Mind over magic? I have not seen that one yet. What is it? Yeah, it's not on my two playlist, but I don't, I don't know what it is. I have a lot of things that I have to play over the next couple weeks, but uh, that one I haven't looked at yet. I haven't heard of yet. Okay. Requests? Hi, Chief. I'm Carla. Excuse my haste. I've come a long way, and you're the only group of people I've come across. I need your help. I'm a member of a village of 20 people and our water wells have run dry. Well, we sure do have the water. We couldn't find a permanent solution in our vicinity. With our situation worsening day by day, fellow villagers like me have gone to seek help. I don't have time for this. No. <laughs> MOM is like Auction Not Included meets Hogwarts. Oh, someone mentioned a game coming out like Auction Not Included. That must be what they were talking about. Mom. Carla changed very suddenly. She just got our attention with that voice and then switched to the real voice. Like, yeah, I might take a look at it. We have no choice but to leave our home, but we have neither the strength nor the resources to build a settlement from scratch. If you would help have us, we'll join you. Uh, yeah. We have to provide 90 meals, 240 water, 35 tools, and then we'll get 20 more people. Nice. Uh, Auction not included, mixed with RimWorld, kind of, with a Don't Starve style. Yeah, I haven't looked at it, but I think someone was talking about that the other day. All right, so we're going to need uh, more houses when that comes in. So we currently can house 80. Oh, we need more anyway. So one, two, three, four. And then we want to put the road around this. All right, we're really low in lumber. Um, We have a lot of paper right now. Let's switch gears on this and pump out some lumber to get this stuff done. Wait, wait, why is it saying those don't have access to the road? Hey, you do. Oh, there we go. Okay. That was weird. Maybe they didn't when I first built it and so it like snapshotted that or something. Right, get that lumber done. It's on alpha, but it looks nice so far, in your opinion. Got some pain points and can become a waiting grind. The first goal playthroughs currently. 35 hours so far. I haven't reached the end of the early access yet. I'll have to take a look. Uh, yeah, we really need that lumber. Production is starting. We're currently consuming the exact amount we're making per day. Not great. Not great. Reach population of 100, yeah. Nice. Um, so that's where we're going to uh, produce the wire. Yeah, we're ready to research wire. Okay. Still good on the iron ingots yet. Yeah. There we go. Now they're getting the houses built. Okay, and that's covering all that. Good. 
Something is approaching. Chief, these sounds can only come from a machine. Could our ears be deceiving us? Let's calm down and see what's going on. Uh-oh. It's published by Clay... Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are the... I should not include and don't start people, yeah. Oh, boy. A friggin' ship. <sighs> like a warship. I can hardly see because it's a storm, though. Uh, all right, let's see what's coming from this. Okay, we have 11 free workers. Actually eating through the soup pretty quickly. We need to get to the upgraded soup kitchen, but I don't think we have that in this cycle. Uh, we fully staff that now. Yeah, aside from those specialists. Okay, we're going to have people there once the wire is researched, which is pretty soon. And I'm going to go ahead and switch one of these back over to paper. I don't want to stop paper. You know what? We'll switch two of them back over. Yeah, here we go. Look at this fine chap. I come on behalf of the Confederation of Autonomous City-States. My name is Senior Colonel J. Hamilton, Commander of the 13th Squadron. I extend my greetings to you. I demand a meeting with the leader of this community. Look, it's Defective Inspector. <laughs> Let me guess. Chief? Captain? Mayor? I at least hope you don't call yourself General or Governor. I can see your whole village getting worked up over my arrival. The beautiful machine that carried me here is called the TMS Horror. Despite being a century old, it's still fully functional. I assure you. On the way home, we had an unfortunate series of incidents. We lost one of our engines in a violent storm that lasted for two weeks straight, and three of our comrades were severely wounded during attempts to repair it. Despite an unresponsive rudder and a malfunctioning engine, thanks to my vast seamanship, he, he does look like he's had a lot of seamen, and leadership skills, like he commands a lot of people at sea, of course, we managed to follow the coastline and avoid being tossed around in the open sea, eventually finding your settlement. <laughs> Inspector, <laughs> if I thought you were sufficiently advanced, I would have liked to stay and establish diplomatic relations on behalf of the Confederation. Unfortunately, you seem only to be a bunch of stragglers. Therefore, without further ado, I request your support for a quick repair, for which we cannot give anything in return. What? Uh, we will also need to replenish our stock of supplies. Normally, a Confederate officer would not condescend to ask for anything from small and desperate settlements like yours. But today, the circumstances demand it. Think hard about your answer. The Confederation does not make trades, but it always responds to rejected demands. What the crap? Uh, I think you fast, Dick. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for the kind words. Glad you're enjoying it. More on the way, as always. 355 iron, 35 tools, 1400 meat, 630 vegetables, which we haven't even started growing yet. Or we can anger them. Oh my god. I'm going to... I'm going to help them. He's in a friggin' warship. We're in wooden huts. I can't... I can't afford losing people right now. Oh, that sucks though. 20 days for labor theft. Alright, wire production is good. Uh, that's what they say, right? What do we do when terrorists demand things? Give them what they want. I think that's the rule. Right? Yeah, I think that's the rule. All right, uh, so we will need to get vegetables growing. Uh, I think the kale yard grows vegetables and herbs, so. Uh, wow, lots of fertile land over here. So we'll get those going. Spread them out a little bit. Those aren't going to be able to produce anything until spring, but... Combing the wasteland. What do you want? Chief, we need more people to sustain what we're, we've built. We can't keep relying on stray travelers finding us or scouts stumbling upon small settlements. We have to pr a proposal to systematize our growth. All right, I'm listening. 
We form small envoys and send them off in certain directions. Hopefully, some of them will discover communities who are unaware of our existence and are willing to join us. It would be a good idea to give these envoys some of our best crafted products. A freshly sealed can of food, a shiny new hammer, or a spotlessly clean outfit will help persuade and uplift people who know nothing about or but deprivation. You can use the initiative as a periodic action as you like, sending envoys to look for new settlers. Yes. But right now, all work is going towards this friggin' warship. Unforbidden Glade event. <laughs> Always negotiate with terrorists. That's right. That's right. Always give them what they want. Always negotiate. See red flags in the future? Yeah. Yeah. But that's one of the fun parts of these games, right? As a private person, you comply. As a state, you cleanse their homeland. <laughs> cleanse. All right, uh, so we're going to get vegetables going. And we want these fully staffed when the winter is done. So I'm just going to go ahead and put people in it. I know they can't grow with it right now, but it's, it's, it's labor that we don't. I really got to get another uh, kitchen going too. So what are we overproducing right now? We are overhunting still. Um, we're also producing more stone than we need, but that's going to go away pretty quickly when we actually start using it. Uh, wood is also going to go away faster than I would like. Let's pull... Pull these guys from this. Should probably wait till after the winter, but just go ahead and get it set up. Okay, four, 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 okay. Oh, they're actually done with the iron there, too. So we're going to need to get an iron mine sometime. Uh, We could look for another, like, just hand mining operation for the field camp. So we don't have to worry about another mine. And we don't really need, like, the ingots and stuff. Yeah, there's one right there. We don't need it super soon anyway, so... Just getting this here. Should be fine. Is this around the creators of Frostmunk? It is not, nope. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's more similar to Banished or Anno than it is Frostpunk, though it does have some choice things that you, you do, of course. And we're not making anything there right now because of the stolen labor thing. Oh my lord. We're going to have to put labor up. It feels very frost funky with the UI and the choices. Yeah. It's a, it's a CD build game. Actually, I shouldn't want, I made a video going over what the game is. But it is always interesting that when a game does something so well, of course, you're, there's going to be comparisons made to it. It reminds me of back when uh, Darkest Dungeon was the main game of the channel, and if we played anything else with 4 on 4 bait combat, even if the rest of the game wasn't similar at all, it would be... People would be like, is this a Darkest Dungeon clone? Or after Slay the Spire made like the, the deck building thing super popular, which Slay the Spire wasn't the first one to do it, they were the first one to really hit a home run with it. Anything with cards after that, even games that were very different, like Monster Train, uh, I would have people come in with Monster Train and be like, oh, is this a Slay the Spire clone? <laughs> it's like, no. No, it's completely different. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a city builder management game that is all about supply lines and um, going through these cycles of technology to get further and further into the future. So similar to the systems of lots and lots of city builder games, for sure. So its own take on a lot of it. Roller Coaster Tycoon ripoff. And to be fair, yeah, you didn't you didn't say that it was a ripoff. It just had some similar looks, which is true. But it is it is always funny to me when we do get stuff like that. Yep, I compare it to banished anno stuff like that. Yep. Yes, everything is derivative, and derivative isn't a bad word. Same thing with all movies, all books, you know, everything. Starcraft, no, <laughs> pretty far from that. Uh, all right, so we did that one. So that one we're going to get 20 more people from. Uh, so 20 people arrive over time. 
Is this a tropical clone Minecraft? It's it's really derivative of Pong, to be honest. Pac-Man. <laughs> right, we have one free worker at the moment. Uh, Man, we are still consuming so many more clothes than what we're using. I'm going to put clothing down to a medium. We might, when we get more workers, we might end up getting another tailor going. Part of that's because our reduced workforce. We could, now that it's not winter time. We could do this. People are going to get really unhappy, though. I don't know about that. We need to be running this a lot, too, but... Many things to do. Uh, also, let's do... Tools are pretty low right now, too. We're going to go tools down to medium as well. I'm going to be happy with that. They saw prior innovation. That's right. That's right. After someone invented the wheel, they didn't have to keep reinventing it in different ways elsewhere. Every game is Baldur's Gate 3 ripoff to you. <laughs> Wait, what is this? What's the point of increasing food shares if some of us don't even get a bite? We don't have enough food to meet the ration distribution you've set for the population. Yeah, I was saying that we need another one of these kitchens. We have the raw food. Let's go down to medium. We don't have the better kitchen yet, so this is the best output we can do. And with the work decreased uh, from all these events going on right now, we're having a, we're having a pretty big problem. We gotta get these events done. What do we need for this one? It's mainly gonna be the vegetables. And we need to get started on iron ingots here too. So let's switch that back over. It'll take a while. Um, We can pull three off of paper. Actually, let's play pull four off. We're not doing any, uh, I need to look at research again, but we're not doing any uh, training at the moment, so. Eats. Okay, we're producing so little. 12 a day. Minus 12. Labor theft for 20 days. We did not consent to all this work. No good will come of it. That's because of the ship event. We gotta get that done. We're getting so little all of our stuff right now. In fact, we can't even use the wire. So we're going to switch this over to tool production. Ugh. Not good. People are hungry. I'm going to have to put more work. Uh, how's the health looking? Just keep an eye on it, I guess. The worker. And I might have to put down another kitchen just temporarily. Like, it's producing very little, but we have to get we have to get food back up. That grain mine plan on that ship. That would be nice. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have accepted it. One a day and three a day on vegetables. Ugh. Brutal. Chess too. <laughs> that's just anarchy chess. All right. Uh, some of these have ran up, so now we should start pumping food again. Lurking in two forty. My pa my face is only a hundred pixels. <laughs> uh, thank you for the lurk. Johnny Tide Lips, 21 months. Getting close to that first calendar year. You might make it just yet, Johnny. Might make it just yet. So we have a room for 120 right now. We're out of tools. Uh, we're going to have to turn tools down to low. Have to Man, they're going to get really unhappy. This down to low, too. At least it's not winter time. So 
TRT, we should share the family pixel. Family pixel. There we go. We're getting that food pump back out now. Tools are starting to come. We do need, we're going to need another clothing production place. At some point, let's put that there. Two free workers. Um, both of those reducing tools, right? Yeah, they just don't have enough lumber to keep it going. So... Yeah, the work efficiency is crazy low. Uh, we're going to switch that over to lumber. All hands on deck lumber for now, I guess. He said the line. I ain't saying nothing. Uh, do you want to accept six more people? Yeah, we're in trouble right now, but sure. More mouths. Fine. I actually do need to try to train another, uh, another craftsman, but let's see. We got the tools done for this. We're on our way on the meat and the iron ingots. The vegetables, though, looks like it's going to take a long time. And if we don't get that done by winter, I have a really rough time. Hmm. Have any workers? At least the workers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Needy harpies. Maybe their relatives would send us some uh, some goodies. If that were the case. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... I kind of would like to get a smelter going. I think we have the power to do it. So getting these traded out for a smelter would be nice. Feel like playing Frostpunk? I thought about doing some Frostpunk before Frostpunk 2 comes out, but I might, I might just not end up having time. There we go. Food's looking good again. Tools and clothing going the right direction. Ooh, we have a big drought coming. But uh, I think we're all right. I think we might have enough water to survive a drought. Maybe. Seems like we're doing all right. We're going to be playing this. Yep, yep. Uh, and I made a video about it too. So if you want to help out the stream, um, or if you're just interested in the game, type exclamation what, and you'll get a link to the video I posted this morning of the game. Exclamation what edited video for this. Uh, Geo, they were the six months. What cycle are we on? I think we're on cycle four. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, we're almost, we're almost done with cycle five. But slow going. I haven't even sent scouts or anything up. Pretty early, pretty early. Can I show the in-game text tree? So the, in my video, I show it. So if you go to exclamation what? But one of the things here is you can't see all the way ahead. So you can only see like up to your current cycle and the next cycle. But there's all the way to eight. So I can't show that one, but I do show it in my video. Oh man, another friggin' disaster. The air is burning our throats. The sky is reddening. What are we going to do? Stay calm. <laughs> we gotta get this ship out of here before we can... Worry about other disasters. Christ. Ready to barter. Um. No. Smoke clouds. We observed a large fire in the distance, Chief. We're unfortunately familiar with this situation. Though severity diminished, our species is still the main cause of these fires. We can't say when or if it will be extinguished. If it will spread to us or if we can even intervene. However, it's certain that we'll be exposed to dense smoke and all the hazards it carries. We can take some precautions or we can accept whatever fate brings us. The decision is up to you. <sighs> minus 25 health and minus 5 or 15 morale and the probability of fire. Or we're going to lose a lot of work again, but I can't let everything burn down. Oh, that sucks. We were just getting th things better. Just getting things better. 
after combat in the game. There's not combat like raids at the moment. Uh, there are combat through events and enemies through events and choices in that regard. However, there is there are going to be scenarios and uh, one of the ones that they've previewed, um, you are defending against someone that destroyed your previous settlement and the screenshot in the game, like it's just not selectable yet, shows a base where your main building is surrounded by these like futuristic cannons. So there appears that eventually, at least in certain scenarios, there'll be some kind of at least defensive thing with cannons and whatnot. At the moment, the only attacks are through events. At least that I've ran into, which... Uh, and, and, you know, I've read or whatever. Uh, Carla is sending us one more person. Uh, and then it's mainly getting the vegetables in. I obviously don't want the decision to be up to you. All right, all of Carlos' people are here. We're up to 142. So we do want to get some more housing done. Uh, we haven't researched the new houses yet, so. So you guys are just going to live in shacks still. Sorry. I'm pretty well on population, though. And those little embers falling really bother me. All right, uh, let's go through and make sure... Oh, hang on. Make sure everything is staffed. As we continue to grow, the volume and variety of our needs will likewise expand. There can be no further progress without more potent energy sources to support the growing need. All is the most valuable and readily available resource for this, just as it was centuries ago when our ancestors revolutionized our civilization. Let's pull our efforts and activate our first coal generator. Okay. We just hit a new cycle. Nice. All right. Let's get back to our research. And I need to switch over to more paper production again. Um, Stable roots. Okay. Yeah, th there's just no production right there right now because of all the, the negatives. Um, Did we scan this to see what's in there? Let's analyze this. Maybe there's coal right here. Going, King Alpaca. New game. Yeah, came out today in early access. Exclamation what? That command will get you a video that I released this morning about what the game actually is. Used to watch in the past streams. Forgot this is live. No referral link to this. The best thing you can do to support uh, me with the developers in this game is to interact with that video that I posted today. The what is video. So you can either. Uh, it's 10. Okay. That's good. We found 10. But we're looking for coal. Anyway, if you go to the what is video I made and released this morning, uh, that's the biggest way to help with this. Yeah. Okay, there's one mine there. There's three things that we could scan here. So let's go ahead and make a mine up here and we'll scan these. And see if we can find... Oh, and let's... Uh, while, it's, while it's scanning these resources or whatever, let's go ahead and go make sure our workforce is good. Uh, tools are looking good now, so let's go ahead and go back in here and put distribution to regular. And clothing, we'll put to medium. Food, we'll go back to regular now. Should help quite a bit. Uh, we're gonna leave those on, but I might have to switch another one to... Uh... Oh, right. These take only the, um, specialists, so we need to try to get some more of them trained. Uh, let's go ahead and try to get these trained. Hopefully a few of those get trained. Uh, meanwhile, everything else is staffed. Switch that back over to paper. Switch that one back to paper as well. Those are all good. What do we have here? More clothing. Uh, actually, we have... Some of Carla's people were already trained. I didn't realize that. There we go. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. Food and everything is still good. The mine over here is still fully occupied. Let's go see what we scanned. Earn them goggles. <laughs> uh, we could also put some of these workers in grabbing those mushrooms. Might as well. Okay. What are we getting analyzed here? 
iron. Yeah, we're going to find um, coal. Find coal. Uh, also, now let's create a scout team. And let's get her out and exploring. Let's check out the highlands. Because we're about to the point where we can put some uh, building and stuff out there. Oh, what is it now? These needy people. Chief, we've come a long way as a community. Our need for different infrastructures for diversified needs and production chains is increasing rapidly. Our settlement needs permanent solutions that will support advanced construction methods. In addition, advanced structures will need regular maintenance. Build a maintenance building. Yeah, okay, I'll get to it. Uh, so again, like if you watch the, since I'm, you know, I don't mind answering the question, but since I'm being asked that like over and over, that's one reason why I released, released that video. So if you type explanation what, you'll go to a video that I made and released this morning, edited video that talks about what the game is, but it's a city builder survival game. So a lot of it's going to match or, or overlap with a lot of other games. Uh, I would say that the most unique parts about it are the advancements in cycles and therefore technolo technology. So unlike Banish, which stays at like this technology level, um, we're going to be getting to like crazy automation and conveyor belts and automated factories and stuff like that eventually if we survive. Uh, we should take care to preserve our momentum. Our revolutionary progress in energy production has paved the way for coming up with products that we've theorized but never attempted to produce before. We have set our sights on miraculous medicine, drinks, oh my lord. So now they're wanting us to get them medicine and beer. Oh, we have so many things to do. And brick production is like terrible at the moment. What are you using all these bricks for? I don't know. Clay is fine, so we actually need another kiln. Yeah, uh, that video is, is, is there to answer uh, questions like that for sure. And if you have any questions after checking it out, definitely let me know. Oh my God, they all went. I never had that happen when I was playing the alpha and the beta. I actually made more craftsmen than I thought I was going to. Okay. So now we can put two in this mine. And then we have some ready for the other mine. Um, But we need bricks for that. I mean, I guess I could just go ahead and have it mine the iron while we're waiting like might as well sort of thing uh and let's get another kill and we're gonna need one for glass eventually anyway so we need the bricks going but yeah they're going through the different cycles and uh progression of te technology levels and different eras and whatnot it's kind of nice and it's gonna happen suddenly they burn your city in riots because there's no spices <laughs> Feels a little like that. They're not rebelling quite yet, but. Okay, there's not a lot more wood left with that, so we're gonna probably need to build another one of those going into the woods. Down there. Wood's okay right now. Vegetable production is start. Oh, winter is hitting. Where are we on that? Yeah, we just need vegetables. Alternative companions. What? Animals were close friends to our ancestors. The first moments of our civilization's end, they were the first to be abandoned. After a while, they started to be used as a source of meat. This hunter-prey relationship, which has lasted for half a century, can now change. Now we have enough resources, and our children are growing up in a world where sharing is once again an option. Our growing welfare attracts stray cats and dogs to our settlement. People end up adopting them as pets, even if they don't initially intend to. It would be best to encourage this state of affairs. So we can have cats and dogs, or we can forbid it. <laughs> so pets. Rations needed per capita increases, but morale increases and the chance of having pest events decrease. Episode 8 of the melee run. Oh man, melee run is... Uh, the original melee only, or the melee gods one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's have... Let's have pets... We got food, we got food. Fine. Fine. Okay, we can also go back to normal on clothing, I think. Who is Cletus? 
Cletus is uh, my hillbilly voice that I sometimes use for fun. A made-up character. Oh, crap. Um, bricks. Increase that. I'm okay, like, just stockpiling stuff for now. We might fine-tune this later, but for now, just make whatever. Made up, yeah, likely story. That's not what my original accent sounded like, no. So it is a bit made up. A bit, a bit. Uh, all right, let's see if we find coal. Delicious cats. Are you Alf? Cats were at dinner until recently, that's true. Hey, coal, what do you know? All right, let's grab the coal. And then, whoops. A lot of things I need to research. Kind of behind on that. Um, bricks, man. I need bricks. Bricks and wire. Uh, I think we stopped wire production temporarily. Let's switch that back on. And, oh, kill them. There we go. Okay. We have extra workers now, too. I could put down another pit. But it looks like we're okay on that. Those are the ingots we bought. Yeah, wire is pretty low. Copper ore, we're, we got the better smelter down now. We could put another smelter, too. We have one extra specialist. I don't think we super need to. How's our scout doing? Yuck. And goofy. Game for today or tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Why? Is Goofy meant to be a hillbilly? I don't know. Goofy's just a good dad. That's it. Is that hillbilly? Just I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure which one would be better for us. Um... So that's the better houses, sand and glass. Okay. Why do you like cornbread so much? Have you ever had cornbread? Like good cornbread? Cornbread is a southern staple. That's why. Cornbread and pinto beans. Good sweet cornbread. Slightly sweet. Cornbread and chili. Every day we cross a new threshold in being able to live like human beings. Chief, we know how essential paper is to our development. The people wish to be able to use it more freely. Keeping diaries, scribbling, taking notes, more than making people's work easier. It will be beneficial for everyone to give them a medium to express themselves. Maybe it will create opportunities and open new horizons in the future as well. 15% knowledge gain for all classes. Or tell people no. Alright, you can, you can use some paper. Red beans and rice. We have a chance for three inches of snow tonight, so maybe we should go today then. All right, you can use some paper. And I'm going to need even more paper production. Oh, our scout has found first place. Vast plains of grass and rocky ground leading to steep slopes rising to the sky. With a hint of a mountain range ahead, these lands may have abundant resources with ample rainfall. For possible, uh, we might find logs, iron ore, meat, or water. So let's go ahead and have her go to the next part of this. Scout Team 1. All this is still looking pretty good right now. We just need to keep getting our research done and wait on those vegetables to get finished. Toilet paper win. Why they just wipe with the snow this season? Social hierarchies, chief. This may sound a bit sinister at first, but hear us out. We've all worked hard and paid the price to make life here what it is. We provide a level of comfort and order that can even be considered a luxury in this lost world. There are risks in opening our doors to outsiders, but we know there's nothing else we can do to grow. 
Still, it isn't right that newcomers should immediately have access to the same opportunities and welfare as our brothers and sisters who have paid such heavy price to get us far as we've come. Oh, man. There are people among us who underwent craftsman training more than five times. It's simply not fair for someone to show up at our door tomorrow. Hey, uh-uh, they, they got it on the first try. Immediately supersede our hardworking fellows. We demand that you solve this matter with a regulation to give extra benefits to those who have lived and worked here for longer. Go on, FD. He's, a, he's against student loan forgiveness, this guy. <laughs> Hierarchy of contribution. Those who have been living in our settlement for a longer period of time will have some preferential rights, being first in the distribution of shares, separate participation in trainings and housing lotteries. Relative newcomers will not have these rights until they have worked in heavy and dirty jobs for quite some time. Did Cletus and Grandma have an affair? No, neither of them are into incest. Neither of these, neither of these fictitious characters are into incest. But we can't put down our fellows. So the problem is both of these could lead to other things down the road that we don't know. This will probably lead to some kind of rebellion thing. This might also. And then that's a very specific question. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I don't like that this one says it's always up to you. All right. Hierarchy it is. Let's see what that leads us to. Mm. All right, uh, so we have some extra workers. We have coal coming in from this. Um, as we research, we're gonna have more building types that we need to need to use too. Um, we might do another mine and start getting, well, we need to start making sand or yeah, sand and glass too. So I guess that kind of answers that. We'll go with this and then we'll we'll put the people to uh, to work in a new pit. Okay. New pits. And then we'll get uh, another kiln going. All we have access to is basic kilns right now. And I guess we'll throw down a few more wind turbines over here until we get the coal up and going. Give your six. Do it. Which that exists today that doesn't use some kind of seniority meritocracy system? I'm not sure. Who knows? There might be some islanders somewhere that don't. I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, though. Kind of preferential treatment. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Sand. Nice 300. Yeah, we're getting there. And glass. All right, everyone's to work. Uh, did our scout? Yeah, there she is. Okay. So she found some iron ore veins. Uh, and then we'll go over here. So for anyone that hasn't seen this, basically these zones, over time, you can build structures here. And as you get ways to supply them, like this one, we'll get, um, we'll try to get people sent to your settlement. Road makes things more efficient. As you unlock more uh, areas, more buildings, we can have autonomous things going on out here. And eventually we can have a train leading there that will drop off a ton of resources back home. Um, but all these do take food rations and we haven't made it to the workshop yet, which is what makes the tinned cans. So no reason to put anyone out there right now, but we'll go ahead and get things explored with her so that when we do reach that, uh, we'll be ready for that. Go on, Siren. In theory, all of them. Technically, in theory, none of them. It's the Adam special. It depends. Oh, they're not covered by a tavern, so we might as well make another one of those. Uh, what's the tavern cost anyway? Some paper for writing. Okay. All right. Uh, let's keep going here. We're almost done with that vegetable thing, finally, after all this time. Uh, also, we just unlocked uh, guard houses. So we're going to start putting those. Uh, 
around by crying. Kind of frostpunkish. <laughs> There's a city builder yet. Royal class. Wasn't that like a... Is that the ultimate seniority? <laughs> We've been royal forever, so we supersede you and get all the things. All right, what'd she find here? Potential water source. Okay. We are actually going through meat pretty quickly, but we're building up a stock, so... Should be all right. Almost done with this. We'll start upgrading houses once we get... Ooh. Oh, crap. Uh, I forgot to set this. Uh, these guys. Water. You guys get double water. And you get... Uh, regular food. There we go. Uh, anyway, we'll start upgrading the houses after we get the coal going, probably, because the new houses are going to take a lot of a lot of power. We also house a couple more people each. All right, so we got all that tier done. So this gives us access to pub instead of the uh, the tavern, fair meals, which are going to start requesting pretty soon. Uh, the coal generator is the main one we need, so we need to save up some wire to research that one also get the kitchen we have to have earned rights first okay and that one has to have pressurized systems uh yeah let's let's wait and grab the whole thing first we have a quest to do so anyway everything's looking okay up here recent wire okay almost done with this freaking ship Barren lands, okay. Here, Ryan Jeff. Pong, yeah. I mentioned that earlier to you. This Pong ripoff. Is okay, so they're up to 70 now. Storm's coming through. Pong's the root of a ping pong. Oh, uh, that woodcutter is not doing anything anymore. We'll get rid of that. And we want to put a new one down here. Let's go on Zakim. Yeah, if you want to see my overview of the game, I made a video, came out today. If you type exclamation what in any, any either of the live stream chats, it'll get you the video. The link's also in the description on YouTube or just straight on the YouTube channel. It's been good so far. It's just hit early access about three hours ago. Uh, I have about 20 hours in the beta and everything as well alpha or beta whatever so far i've enjoyed it right. i really like when you get to the point where you get conveyors and automation and stuff that's always fun we're not super far from that honestly we're just gonna have her keep exploring right now we can't do anything with that out there but having her out there so that we know what's around for when we can do something uh will be a good thing obviously all right, how are we doing on the wire? 189, okay. So, get ourselves to coal. Anything else is looking good? And Jim, are you on both sides? <laughs> that can hurt. Uh, What do we need for the next cycle anyway? Not that we can make stuff from it yet. Seven more population, a lot more knowledge. And that's the that's where you start getting into automation and stuff. We're a long, well, not super long, but we're quite a ways away from getting like steel and stuff for the automation. We'll get there though. We'll get there. All right, this mine is still running full capacity on the copper. We're going to start really needing to get tin. Um, We've got the coal coming in on this one, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and get the other mine down. Uh, I 
I'm gonna put it beside this one because I gotta I gotta think about like later when we get conveyor conveyors going how we'll have this set up. So should be fine. We'll have this pull uh yeah, those two. And I guess I'll just get the third one down for the iron over here too. Oh my god, finally! We don't have to worry about that stupid ship anymore. Alright, so now the ship is not taking this crap from us. We're going to split this one over to herbs and go ahead and get herbs and vegetables built up for the future. We need it for better food and stuff. This is a Factorio ripoff all along. Factorio invented conveyor belts. It's true. Not many people know, but it's true. All right, coal generator. Uh, 200 wire. Okay. Well, I'm just going to put it up here where the coal's being mined. Screw it. New path for power. We're about to break new ground. After a very long time, we'll be able to generate power using fossil fuels again. From now on, we won't be at the mercy of the winds. Everything is almost ready to build the first coal-fired generator. This structure will allow for energy production on a massive scale, though it will need a constant uh, feed of fuel. Sudden blackouts can devastate us, especially if our infrastructure becomes dependent on coal. We need to locate and mine coal deposits. I'm doing that right now. See how much we can stockpile. Stockpile 1,200 coal. We gotta be close to that already, right? Because I've been mining it for a little bit now. Yeah, we already are well over that. Amazon Warehouse is a factorial ripoff. Yeah, it's really crazy that there... So there's a Amazon Fulfillment Center here in Indianapolis. And I'll, I always find it crazy where I'll be like, man, I need another HDMI cable. And I'll go on Amazon and I'll pull up HDMI cable. And it's like, order within 40 minutes and have it at your doorstop within two hours. And it's like, what? And I'll, I almost never do that because I feel bad. <laughs> like, I don't want to start some kind of Rue Goldberg series of torture to Amazon workers in order to get an HDMI cable to me in two hours. I don't need it that much. But first time I saw that, I was really shocked. I think it was an umbrella a couple of years ago for my daughter. I was like, well, I'll order an umbrella and hopefully it'll be here by Monday when you're you're going back to school or something like that. And it was like, order now and have it in two hours. Two hours. I, I don't I don't need it in two hours. But I don't need those in a little bit. So it is, you can choose sometimes too. Um, there is usually an option that's like uh, for hours that says something like uh, choose more than two days out and you get a dollar credit or something like that. So if it's not something urgent, a lot of times I just hit that. It's like, why not? Free the torture, you mean? I also want to pay the price somewhere. Maintenance guy told you it would be a week. Got a heater from Amazon before the sun went down. Helpful sometimes. The digital credit's nice. Yeah, yeah. And it's usually for like their uh, grocery type stuff. So save those up and buy like things that we need. Household things anyway. Not bad to do. But there, I, I haven't ran into a situation yet where I was like, I need this thing in two hours or less. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't ever need anything, but. It's if you sent back to the 5% credit card or something like that. Uh, oh, right. We built some extra mines over there. Let me go employ those people while this is getting built. So this one, we will link it up to the... Let's link this one to the tin. This one we'll keep on the copper. We're actually going to need some of those guys for the new... Uh, power plant. I think it employs eight of these, so let's make sure good there. And let's train a few more of these guys. Okay. 
Ugh. But yeah, I mean, it is kind of nice having the fulfillment center just like... Not, not far. I'm trying not to pinpoint us. Just a little south of us. Very, very close to us. Uh, all right, keep exploring. We'll we'll check all these things and we're ready to build stuff there. Router die. Got a placement in just a few hours. Bronze ingots. We're gonna have to start making those as well. More workers just. I almost said hatched. <laughs> I mean, kinda. Children were born. It's close enough, right? Oh, this only takes six now. I think it used to take eight. Back in the alpha. In the omega. Uh, so three of those got turned into craftsmen. Okay. Now we'll go finish. Merch has arrived. What do you what do you have? Yeah, we don't need any of that guy. I'm sorry. He walked all this way. Should we just feel feel bad and just buy stuff from this digital guy anyway? He did come all this way. This is not from the developers of Frostpunk. No, it's a city builder game. But the only city builder game from the developers of Frostpunk is Frostpunk. So similar. Same genre. Same genre. Alright, so let's pull people off the mushrooms. Or Dream Daddy. No, same genre though. on another stream of mine. Uh, let's see here. We could turn that down now, but uh, health is fine. Yeah, we're fine. You refunded it. Each their own, for sure. Oh, man. Uh, I thought I set paper higher. Whoops. Whoops. I basically don't want a limit on paper. We're going to need so much paper going forward. Too complicated. I, it's it's a resource chain, like a supply chain management game. Yeah, so if, if that's literally what it is. So if you don't like supply chain management, then yeah, definitely not going to like uh, this or other games like it for sure. And as always, each their own, you know. If you have any questions about it, though, feel free to let me know, but... Like Pokemon? Pokemon is not a supply management game, that's for sure. Um. Okay, we definitely want to get to steel. We don't have the technology yet. The knowledge of that. So we'll just unlock what we can while we're waiting on it. If I played Anno, I have not played Anno 1800. I've watched some of it, though. Shame that Nintendo doesn't put Pokemon on Steam. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Good luck with that, Dream. Pocket Crystal League, it's amazing. All right, so we got the coal one done. Uh, we have, or we need to get um, tin and bronze started. So we're going to go ahead and put down another smelter. And we're going to switch this one over to the copper ingots. And we're going to switch this one to bronze. Okay, and then that one's going to be the uh, the tin ones. That's fine, Mega Man stuff on Steam. Yeah, there are some things like that that have gone there back in the day. But I can... I would be shocked if... Uh, Pokemon ever comes to... Although, I was pretty surprised when uh, Diablo 4 went on Steam, although I shouldn't be shocked from Activision in general and anything that gets them closer to any more dollars, but I would be really shocked to see uh, <laughs> Pokemon or, like, Zelda go to Steam or something.
Yeah, yeah, I, hi I highly doubt it. I doubt it. We still need to build the maintenance building, even if we don't end up using it right now. Just to get through that. We have the stuff to do it, so let's go ahead and put that over here. Um, that's still gathering rocks. They're, yeah, they've got a bit of it still. Still to go. All right. There we go. Brand's completed brand of its our market. We'll do it if we want to. Yes, the, the Disney of video games. Our workshop, we need uh, we need a lot of the stuff, obviously, but we're just gonna start banging out whatever we can, working our way towards steel and setting up some of the uh, away stuff. Yeah, an RTS set in the Super Mario. You have to manage your mushroom kingdom. Yeah. Hey, you never know, man. After the whole um. Uh, uh, Mario Rabbids game where you basically have Mario XCOM. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? It can happen. All right. Uh, we don't need people in that right now. I have to remember it's there. Super Mario, Mario RPG. Wait, it's still. Isn't it? That's just a remake of. Old Mario RPG, it's not a, like, crossover game. Grinding alongside a Raven franchise, never say never. Yeah. yeah. Uh, alright. Yeah, we're gonna keep pumping baby right now. What is this? 25 days. Oh, right. Okay. Building in structure and extended. Okay. Um. Let's see. So good on all that. One worker free. Such a weird game. The Mario Rabbit. Yeah. Definitely didn't expect a Mario XCOM. Pretty much. Pretty much what it is. Okay, so we got coal coming in there. We're going to need a permanent source of iron ore at some point, but it's not super needed right now. And we don't have the extra workforce, so we're just kind of waiting on getting some of this done. 21,700 on knowledge. Where are we at? We're almost there. Chief, we propose a new arrangement. We don't have to meet our clothing needs with leather rags anymore. From now on, we wish to wear more comfortable clothes. Oh my god, I forgot to make linen. Average per capita clothing distribution from worker class is decreased, but the chance of disease from weather conditions also decreased. Or people will be happy. Yeah, that sucks. Um, crap. I even mentioned earlier that we need to get that started, and I just completely forgot to put it down. All right, farmland. Um... Looks like this is the best farm area, so we're just going to go that way and start some farms down. Yep. Need that linen. And I kind of just threw those down to get that quest done, so I think I'm going to maybe move those into a better place sometime. We'll just get rid of it for right now. They can't do anything during the winter anyway. You can help with some other stuff. Wood production is pretty low. Do we ever put people in this? Yeah. We do have some people to get logs elsewhere. Let's uh, let's have one up here. Oh wait, we already have one building there. My bad. Get rid of that one. That should do for right now. We'll keep an eye on it. All right. Um, you played Battle Brothers? I have played Battle Brothers, yep. Yep. Battle Brothers is a very brutal game. Fun, but very brutal. I remember, um, back when I first played it, it was back when, uh, Darkest Dungeon was the main game on the 
on the channel and I used to tell people like Dark's Dungeon brutality is nothing in comparison to Battle Brothers. The game is just absolutely, absolutely brutal. I almost combined some words there. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to get Linen going here. Yeah, so now we have to have linen to produce clothing with, and that means clothing... Uh, it's gonna be a problem after we run out of the stockpile we have, but luckily we got a lot of that in before. So right now with her, we can't really, like I said, we can't really do much out here, but I'm just having her go ahead and, like, pre-explore places where we can do stuff. Yeah, I, I like Battle Brothers, it's just... Like brutal. Uh, earlier we were talking about games and their graphics and that graphics don't necessarily represent how good a game is. It took me a while to try Battle Brothers because I just do not like the the art style in, in that game. Don't like it that much. They look like um like I don't know, game pieces or something. Loves it, wants you to try it. Bit, bit by it. It is really good. It's, uh, it's, like I said, it's very brutal. There's a lot of different scenarios, too, though. A lot of different difficulty settings, which I always like. But, uh, and it can be really, really brutal. Am I eating good? Yes, I'm looking thin. I've been the same weight now for like two and a half years or something. So, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Um, is there anything that we're overproducing right now? I guess I could take some people off paper. Do really got to get the linen going. Also food production. Let's go ahead and uh, put a few of these down. Look like, yeah, that's what I meant. They look like game pieces, yeah. Yeah. I have to keep an eye on food production, but we should be fine. The details, etc. Yeah, I just wish the characters were full characters. That's the only thing. You've lost 15 pounds in three months. You've had a bad cold twice in four weeks. Every time you lose all motivation and eat to get some energy. Yeah, yeah that is rough. Hopefully feel better soon. That time of year, I guess. Yes, I'm eating fine. Thank you. Do I have a diet? No, not really. I mean, I eat relatively, relatively healthily aside from takeout. And we do that, which we do probably like, we eat out like twice a week, I guess, which we shouldn't, I know. And I try, the only thing I guess diet wise uh, is I, I do eat a lot of protein because of um, exercising and stuff and weights. But aside from that, I just try not to drink calories unless there's no other option or something. So I just that's the only diet that I really would say, I guess, that I follow. You know, we don't need all this power. Can I just take some of these guys out of here? That's <laughs> two, two supervisors and one worker. Man, I'd hate to be that guy. Need to be that guy. All right. Uh, so those are good. Do we actually need the other workers anywhere? I mean, I could just keep stockpiling food, but it's not really a huge priority. Those two are going to be producing linen. We got those pulling that out. I do need an iron mine. So maybe I'll just go ahead and get that started. And then I could get people. Hey, I'll wait till this iron's done. Before I make the iron mine. It's not like super urgent. Seafood diet. You see food. You eat it. Ah, the most fun diet. Too many takeouts in a month. Blame your cousin. <laughs> Should I blame them also? Play the blame the blame the Fae Fam for some some of those at least. Hey, steel production. All right. All right. 
Wait, it seems it will. No. Feel about your Twitch YouTube journey so far? Pretty happy with it, yeah. Uh, I mean... It's kind of crazy. I never thought that I would ever have a time on Twitch where I average over a thousand people. I thought it was going to be impossible for me to get over 200 people for a long time. I was like struggling with it, you know, not really struggling, but, and now, uh, when I stream, when I'm not doing variety and I stream RimWorld and I get the reports on Twitch that it's like, you're in the top 0.04% of all streamers on Twitch. Like, holy crap. Crazy. Able to pay all the bills for my family. Was able to move somewhere uh, where my daughter can go to a really nice school. She doesn't need to want for anything, so I'm very, uh, very fortunate, very happy with the stream. Yeah. Obviously, I always want it to grow, and I want the um, the variety side of it to grow and catch up to RimWorld someday. But it's nice knowing that if you know that that my wife and daughter don't have to worry about anything, I just do content creation, and it pays for everything. How's the game so far? I like it. Yeah, I like it. If you want to see my entire thoughts on it, if you type exclamation what, I released a video today. It goes over the game, what it is, its uh, systems and things like that, and how I feel about it all. But exclamation what, if you type that in any of the live chat uh, stream chats, you'll get the link. Or you can find it in the description on YouTube or just on the YouTube channel. But yeah, I started doing full-time hours in late 2017. And it took like three months to hit partner. And then it took a couple of years to really get where it was paying everything, I guess. Like probably two years. Now, yeah, it's been nice. Been good. <laughs> it's it's a city builder supply chain management game, yeah. What's in game loop here? The progression seems interesting. It looks like breadcrumbs you along good pace. Uh, so the end game is about, um, automation, efficiency, setting up like conveyor belts and automated work and, um, train systems and train systems on the world map and autonomous settlements out here that are feeding you materials. Your really your real goal in the very late game in the extreme late game is to get to the point where your people are basically being pampered. They have all their needs and all their wants given to them. They don't have to work much because everything is, is automated. Are there different difficulties? Yes, yeah, I go over all the difficulties in that video also. Again, if you type exclamation what, it'll go to the video and also it's timestamps if you wanna to go to that portion. But not only does it have set difficulties, it also has custom difficulties. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna see all those, they are in that video as well. But yeah, plenty, plenty of options for sure. But yeah, that's what the extreme late game is. It's about like, you go from banished to something closer to like Factorio in a way throughout it. Is that a video? I do. I do go over the difficulties. Yep, in the video. Yep. Right, is needed for healthy stream. Yeah, it is nice. That I can do that. Uh, today I'm just showing off normal difficulty. Yep, just showing off the normal game today. That's normal. All right. Uh, so we've unlocked a few more things. Let's go ahead and go through this. I still think the water pump needs a buff. It's not really worth using uh, out of just putting a bunch of friggin' we wells down right now. Generally. So the metal works, very important. We're going to need quite a few of those down. Uh, that's going to be our next thing before we get to the workshop. So metal works going to be pretty important. And we're just going to keep extending up here. Kind of crazy. I've never built like this, any of these... But, uh, we're trying something different. Different from me, anyway. Different for me. So, the last three or four times I've played this in the, um, in the alpha, beta, whatever, I've built, uh, like, little square sections here and there, which I know I still am this way. You, you don't have to build in a grid. There's a free build version or, um, option. But... I'm just making a long line of all the similar buildings and seeing seeing how it turns out. Uh, it's probably going to be a real friggin' pain when I get to the point where we need conveyors going everywhere. But for now, that's a problem for future us to worry about. Oh, we need two more of those guys? Okay. Let's see if we can get those done. And then the metal works. We're going to need... Actually, we're going to need two for that, too. So I should have 
Should have gone ahead and uh, put more in there. Just something you're fighting against in the game. Uh, it's player versus environment mostly. On the campaign, which is what I'm doing, there's also a lot of events. So we're going to have to make tough decisions. Like earlier, there was a warship out in the bay. And the warship was basically like, hey, give us all this stuff, which puts you in risk of people starving, dying, etc. Or we'll be back and you're going to pay sort of thing. So mainly stuff like that through events. Aside from that, it's mainly player versus environment. So weather events, um, catastrophes and other kinds, you know, lots of different kinds of disasters, starvation, dehydration, uh, extreme droughts and other weather phenomenon, uprisings and rebellions. Like there's a, that sort of thing. Prove of some of my decisions. Ah, screw that guy. I'll ruin his life. Future Adam. Future Adam. Okay, we're going to need to get started with steel here. And yeah, we need to get these guys trained. I should have just went ahead and trained a bunch. What's Future Adam ever done for nothing? Did I pay them? Yes, I paid the warship off, yeah, even though my people were uh, very unhappy for a while about it. Yeah, I did pay them. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Give terrorists what they want. Always negotiate with terrorists, I think is how it goes. Uh, we need more workers. So as we get steel done... Um... Are we overproducing glass for now? We're going to need a lot of glass to upgrade our buildings, though. Hey, some kids grew up. Nice. 13 children just grew up. Well, straight into the steel mill with you, kids. Okay, excellent. Uh, So now we need to get the workshop down and get some, um, some tinned rations going so we can start building out on the world map. Okay. Get infirmary down to you. They, need, they want medicine and drink production, so we need to get to that. Also, we could start uh, upgrading kitchens, because then it needs less workers. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, wait. Have we not unlocked it? Infirmary medicine. I think we did, right? Here's the pub. Or house, farm. I mean, I guess I could just check in here. No, we haven't. Community foundations. Community foundations. Oh, it's this one. Okay. So we'll get that one next. Oh, that's right. I did look at it, but we needed uh, prerequisites. Oh my god. Well, you know what? Okay, well, <laughs> that kitchen got destroyed. Uh, I was gonna remake these to be more efficient anyway, so... I guess out of all the buildings to get destroyed by lightning, that's... Not too bad. Uh, oh right, I need a couple more of these guys. Let's go ahead and try to train... This guy want didn't like that one in particular sky gun chief the majority of our electricity generation is now in a complex generator structure that requires manpower It'd be challenging to keep these generators running in a stable manner in this uncertain world reduction in labor or anything that ne negatively affects productivity will in turn affect these generators this can lead to unexpected power outages which can shake our entire order and create ir irreversibly dangerous situations apart from the avoiding outages there's a precaution we can take against any loss in power production however comes the risk. With your approval, we can run the generators above the safety limits for a period of time. We make an action out plan available to you for this. Said no one can guarantee what will happen after the safety switches are deactivated and coal is burned above the threshold. So I'm guessing that's just another action if we need to. No, we have to... Wow, well, it's crazy. Uh, speaking of actions, we need more workers and we have plenty of things to... Oh, it is another action. Okay. Uh, we have plenty of 
20, 36 days. Oh, that's the cooldown. Uh, materials for this. So I'm going to go ahead and send them out. So hopefully they bring back people. What do you want now? Chief, we've defined the division of task and represent responsibility between ourselves. We'll conduct follow-up studies on our findings each season. We'll also create sample inventories and records. Start with, we need measuring instruments and workbenches. Some materials and the use of some production facilities will have to be reserved for this. Uh, yeah, this is about the storm. Okay. Double lightning bolt. A bit unfortunate. Item for blast the boilers. Blast the boilers. All right. Uh, now we're going to get to the kitchens. We can really start upgrading things in earnest here. Uh, speaking of upgrading... Um, yeah, I think we can go ahead and start upgrading the house. Let's, let's make sure we get the kitchens upgraded first. They'll free up some labor. <laughs> the lightning strike just gives minus 15 morale to everyone. I guess that makes sense. You just saw an entire building get vaporized by a crazy lightning bolt. inactive for too long. All right. Uh, I'll just demolish it until we have people. I'll just build a new one. Screw it. Hey, nice. All right. A new smelter. Complaining, complaining. We finally researched cemeteries. Wow. We didn't know how to dig a hole before. <laughs> now we do. So... It's good. It's good. What about materials it takes? <laughs> That's what we're about to find out. Oh man, another sandstorm. Some areas are high tech. There's a whole lot to do. What's the lore? So basically, there was massive solar storms that pretty much disabled most of the technology across the world, and then the world fell into civil unrest and strife, massive wars and stuff. Um, took place with there being very little um, technology usable from the constant solar crazy solar storms uh, and this is about 50 years after the dust has settled from that we're rebuilding this time relying on mainly diesel eventually the diesel punk game all right uh, an important day. Oh, it's time to upgrade that again. Okay, cool. Bricks, iron, ingots, glass, and wire. We are producing all that, so not a big good to get to that. Let's go ahead and start upgrading the kitchen. Uh, we'll upgrade. Let's upgrade two of them and see that if that's enough. And then we can free up four workers. Uh, how is the iron over here? Are we good? We good? We still have 400. Uh, no. 1,500. Yeah, so it's basically giant solar storms took everything out, and then people went crazy, as they would. Okay, keep scouting. Uh, so, General Workshop, we're gonna need these to start doing things out on the map, and we need the power tools, too. So, we'll probably need to em employ more people not too long from now in order um yeah we're gonna need more specialists to run these two uh but at the coal plants keep these going all right all right do you have the people Okay, yeah, let's put another one over there. Uh, and let's go ahead and train some more of these. So we're going to need four total in there. We have one right now. We can't guarantee how many of these are actually going to successfully be trained either. So we'll just try to train five. I'm sure we'll need them. Clothing production is good. We're producing way more than we're consuming. Okay. 
fact, let's take a look in here really quick. Uh, where is it? The thing I want to look at is, uh, meat, or smoke meals. My god. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Sapling, thank you for the 16 months. Yeah, my pleasure. Glad you think it's... Glad you still think the content is good. <laughs> thank you, Zeppelin. 16 months, man. Strangers! Three more workers, I'll take them. Alright, what do you guys want? Our settlement has begun to resemble a giant machine fueled by its labor force. We must make sure to keep it well provided for. We should look into expanding our population while making sure we can provide for them. Total force of around 350 people. Ooh. What game is this? This is New Cycle. So this just came into early access about four hours ago. Uh, I released a video on YouTube at the same time that goes over like exactly what the game is. Literally called What is New Cycle? If you type exclamation what in the YouTube chat or in the Twitch chat, you'll get a link to it if you want to check it out. It's an edited video. Uh, or you can find the link in the description, but it's called New Cycle. New Cycle. Uh, how's the brick production going? Because we have a lot of excess clay. We're also not really producing copper ingots very... But we're using them way faster than we're making them. I should probably work on getting rid of the forges. Well, let's see the production. The forges are at 26 a day. These are at 10 a day? Wait, hang on. Oh, that's because it's a different kind. Um, so it'd be easier to combine or to look at the similarities between iron here. 44 a day versus yeah, yeah, these are way more efficient. It just takes um better workers, so. Uh getting us more of the specialist train in order to get these switched over to smelters instead. We can I just upgrade them? Yeah, I guess so. We are content. Tell us brief history of your career gaming. Uh, I've been gaming forever. Yeah, I I started the very first game I ever owned was um, Mario One on the NES. But the very first time I can ever remember playing a video game, I was about three and a half years old at my babysitter's, and she babysit sat a group of of kids, like a big group, and um. She had a big screen TV and she had Duck Hunt and she had Black Bass Fishing. That's the first games I can ever remember playing. And yeah, I've just been playing just about everything ever since then. Like, I just never stopped. Never stopped. Holy crap, 104 per day. All right, we don't need this one anymore. But yeah, if you're wanting to know anything specific or time frame or whatever, I don't, I don't mind answering questions, especially if we're not like super busy at that moment. What a babysitter. Uh, there's a bad story behind that babysitter. So I grew up very, very poor, very poor area. Um, and my mom was working multiple jobs, single mom. And so that's why I had to have the babysitter after school. And um, I can remember that I was there uh, or after like preschool, I, I, I went there. Um, I was there and she was babysitting a, uh, a, a baby pretty much like, you know, able to sit or whatever and the baby was crying and I didn't know anything I'm like three and the babysitter slapped the baby to make it shut up try to make it shut up and I I'm young and innocent I don't know anything so I tell my mom about it and immediately my mom's like it's not even my mom's kid obviously but anyone would be enraged about it immediately my mom is like super enraged and we go to the babysitter's house immediately and Things are done, things are said, um, and I am no longer babysit by this person, and my mom reports it and all this other stuff. But yeah, it was a pretty cool babysitter until she slapped a, a kid, and I told my mom about it. Like I said, I was like three and a half or something, so I was like, just reporting to her, like, she's like, oh, what'd you do today? I, oh, it's fine, there was a baby that wouldn't, that kept crying, and so she slapped him <laughs> or something, you know? It's, but aside from that, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty big aside from, but pretty bad. Yep, pretty bad. 
GTA is way before GTA existed. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that in forever. Man, I don't think I've thought about that in like... 20 years. You tattletale. I found out the consoles have a reset button. Do babies? I like the game so far. I like it so far. Yeah, it's nice. If you like, uh, if you like supply chain management games, that's what this becomes. It starts out as a city builder survival game, and it very quickly becomes supply management, and then it gets to automation and supply management where you're doing conveyor, setting up conveyor belts and all kinds of stuff like that. If you like those kind of things, you will probably enjoy this. All right, so now we have some rations. So now we can start looking at uh, setting up some things out here and see what we have access to. Oh, let's see what the merchant has first. Uh, I just don't need any of that stuff, man. Trauma therapy. 100 years worth GTA. I ratted on the babysitter. I did, yeah. Did. Uh, let's go ahead and build a road out here. So we can do an immigration effect where we put two people out here and they need two tinned cans of food a day. But then we have a chance to bring in more people. I think that's probably the thing we need right now the most is workforce. Like we're still producing a lot of food and water and plenty of minerals. So let's go ahead and build a watchtower as well. And we'll, we'll get that going. All right. Uh, all that is done. What do we need for the next cycle? Uh, we just need knowledge. Okay. We're getting there. Getting there. Now, the tinned rations is probably something I do want to keep kind of low in here. It's set for 1500. All right. Here, people reproduce? Yes. Yeah, that's one of the main ways to get more people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two children were born this year, it says. Or like being paid playing this game, you're gonna play it again in the future. It, it, n those aren't like mutually exclusive. I will play it more, yes, but I like games like this in general. So, if they had not reached out and sponsored me to try it out, and also I'll just tell you what I think about a game either way. Like, I don't know if you've looked at my thoughts video on the drinks, but there companies will not be able to pay me to tell you that I like something that I don't like. Uh, G Fuel. Offer me way more money than gamer subs to lie to you guys. And when I told them I didn't like their product, I didn't like any of their drinks, they told me, oh, that's okay. You don't have to drink it. We'll give you one of our cups. You put whatever you want in it and you just tell people that you're drinking it, that you like G Fuel. And I said no, <laughs> even though they were paying me like four times more than, than the drink that I like. So if I'm playing something and I tell you I like the game, you can trust that I like the game. I will be tactful when I don't like something and tell you nicely how I don't like it. But uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about me telling you that I like a game just to try to, like I'm not getting anything from selling you this game anyway. I don't have any like commission or anything. But um, yeah, it's a long way to say. I like the game, but I like games like this in general. So yeah, I still couldn't, I, I know too, right after it happened that I was gonna burn bridges with G Fuel by telling that to people. They probably don't want me to tell people that, but I was really shocked at the, we were doing a video call with the, with these marketing people of G Fuel that were trying to get me to be sponsored by them instead of the gamer subs at the same time. And when they told me that, I was really shocked. They sent me like 16 samples. I tried all of them. I didn't like any of them. One of them was like, okay, but I didn't really like any of them. And I told them that and they were like, oh yeah, no worries. You just need to lie to them anyway. You don't have to drink it. Like, uh, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Feels really lame. Waiting on your anime thigh free drink samples. Middle of Europe, so probably borders. Uh, you're still waiting on your samples? Did you get it during the free time? Because tons of people in Europe already said they got theirs. Hey, it's Davy. It's a double Davy. Davy, thank you for the 43 months and the 55 months. Davy. Davy Crockett. Uh, man of the Wild Frontier. So I've been told. All right, so we can put two workers out there. We got to free up to. Um, and these kitchens are 
super efficient. You did, lady friend. Oh, I got you. Okay. Took you two months to get yours. Yeah, they told me I was asking them, and they they said they want to um, open some distribution centers overseas, so it's not as slow. But um, someone responded. And they were like, "Hey, just let you know, I got my free sample, and I live in a mountain town in Chile." So they were like, "I was almost certain I wasn't going to receive this." <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome, actually. All right, let's get people out there. Anonymous. Oh, no. Davy's Dentist. <laughs> Some old channel lore. Uh, thank you, Anonymous. I got a good idea who you are. I appreciate it. Shout out to Chile. Davy's Dentist. But yeah, people reproduce uh, in this. That's one of the ways you get more workers. There's So the main ways that you get more workers are through events, uh, them reproducing, but then also uh, the world map and these actions that you unlock. So... We have an action right now that I can use on a, I think it's a 36 day cooldown where people are going to go out and try to uh, invite people from surrounding small camps. Uh, increase, also increases attraction, which is a, is a, um, a rating of like how attractive the town is for people to be coming into. Um, that's one of the things, unfortunately, that the seniority thing that I agreed to is going, uh, is, is impacting, but. We do need to get the housing upgraded. That's another uh, thing I want to do. Wait, what is going on with the tools? Oh, okay. We're fine. You also get old and die. Yes, and there's disease and yep. All that good stuff. Anonymous, thank you for the gift sub too. Davy's dentist mother. <laughs> it's funny because those names have multiple months subscribed <laughs> because of this uh, delivery by helicopter. Good old days. Uh, thank you again, Anonymous Black. Thank you for the 25 months. Very much appreciated. All right, let's start upgrading some houses here. We probably don't want to do too many upgrades right in a row or at the exact same time. We are going to be temporarily homeless. Uh, I don't know, though. Winter's coming. Maybe we should just... Get these we're gonna upgrade the ones that are closest to uh the pub and the guardhouse or weather events an issue yes yeah we've actually had um we had a really long sandstorm we've had severe droughts uh you can have extra long winters it also depends on your map and biome a little bit so you can choose um you can choose difficulty settings but an extension of difficulty is what map you choose. So you can choose maps that have uh, worse weather effects or like longer winters like Tundra or Mountain. So yeah, those are... Uh, yeah, the biomes are like extensions of difficulty, kind of like in RimWorld. Orish, 15 months. Thank you, Orish. Oh, no. Chief, it's just like the stories of the first day. Even the night seems to be losing its darkness. We've read this already. Uh, more storm, more solar storms. Shall be lurking. Thank you for the lurk. Well, that's bigger than the last one. That's what she said. Uh, bad omen. Yeah, we've had one of these already as well. Uh, we are actually pretty low on logs. Let's see here. That one still has a little bit of resources in range. Uh, I know we put another one up. Was it here? Do we only have two woodcutters? Or two woodcutting places? Yeah, we do. So woodcutting might be something we want to look at getting... I mean, we have plenty of trees right now, but in the long run, we're going to need people off map bringing in wood. Uh, we got a lot of papers too. Uh, okay, we'll just put this down through here. And let's get two field camps. Get this stuff chopped. I'd pull some workers off. Scary. Uh, Exclusion what is the command for this game? Yeah, Exclusion what? 
Uh, we're also... Ah, uh, we're still not consuming more than we're making. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Probably. You think it's also called Brooklyn Six-Nine? And we only hope. We only hope. Just, just to do some investigative um, journey or reporting. Spectre. I don't need to know any details. But uh, if you are if your beloved sees, you can just say, oh, it's for science. The man on the stream told me to do it. Winter is here. There's also not going to be a lot of renewal. We had a severe drought, so we got plenty of water stockpiled, but and food, but game's going to be a problem. I could also pull these people off and work somewhere else in the winter. Uh, but we really got to get that wood chopped. Chop, chop, new people. Pull some material. Uh, yeah, I do need that too. Oh, man, minus 20 health. Um... That's still not quite enough to get us low enough with all the clothing and stuff, so I don't think we need to be super worried. Cemetery takes bricks and iron. Where are we going to bury people? Over here at the uh, wind farm. <laughs> you guys want to visit your loved ones that have passed on? You're going to have to come all the way over here. Trust Song Banished in Anno, first time seeing it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's a uh, colony management and survival game, city builder, diesel punk, where you go from like it being like banished to eventually being almost similar to Factorio with automation and conveyor belts and uh, autonomous resource collection in the world map. And uh, yeah, it goes through a, it goes through like kind of multiple of those games in a, in a way as your cycles increase. Ending in trying to get to a point where your people are living in sort of a diesel punk paradise. They don't have to do much work and everything is ran or a lot of things are ran with conveyor belts and automated like metal production and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, we need to get the housing upgraded. I might have to just throw down some basic housing while, we're, while we uh, while we wait. I played Dyson Sphere. No, I have not. Not also go ahead and just um, throw down a residence. Yeah, we'll do that. Instead of waiting. I don't want really, to have people homeless right now during the winter while we're building their houses. Alright, keep exploring. We're going to need this later. So, at the Highlands right now, we are producing just new people coming to the colony. Okay. Right. Hey, we got some more people from that. Uh, we are definitely using... Oh, uh, we're starting to produce more wood than we're using now that we got those two cutters down. So, where do we need extra labor right now? Anywhere? We could even take them off mushrooms during this, but... I don't feel like switching it back and forth. Uh, we do now have enough to, to get the iron mine going. Oh, our iron ingot production has plummeted. That's right. I wanted to upgrade this, but we're going to have to get some more specialists if I want to do that. But we probably need to do that. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and upgrade this. You need iron ingots to upgrade that. Okay. All right. Uh, do we need iron ingots to build it from scratch? Yep. We need to work a little bit. Uh, the houses need to be near a specific... Yes, yeah. So as you progress, you're going to have housing that needs access to a local tavern. You have guard houses for, um, you know, safety. You're going to need pubs and later, um, like, places for them to, um, uh, like, clinics or whatever, like, hospital-type things. Yeah, as your people get more and more needy, you're going to need access to more stuff nearby. You wish real life seasons were like in games. Snow during the winter the entire time. No, thank you. It is kind of funny how that always is the case, though. Just about. Just 
Okay, so the iron ingot production. Uh, you know what? Let's switch. We don't have enough tin ore anyway. We'll switch this over to iron ingots. How's our tin production? Of course, our efficiency isn't super crazy right now. 29 per day. We gotta get to conveyor belts. That'll, like, triple that just from getting to conveyors. But it's gonna be a little bit... But yeah, there are things you want to put in range of the housing. Oh, that one actually doesn't cover there. So we'll need to make another one of those sometime. Not Monster Hunter World yet? Uh, what about it? I, I played Monster Hunter World a lot, but it's been a long time. I think the last time I really played it was when the um, the DLC came out. A couple, few years. A few years. Okay, iron ingots are getting done now, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade this. And then we're going to need more specialists, so... Is there... What uses tin? Uh, the tin ingots. Um, I think. Might be used in... Um, I forget which one. Um, I think it's used in the, um, the cans. No, they're using bronze. I thought that was tin for that one. It might be used for the tool, like the power tools and stuff. Maybe we don't need it yet. Can't remember, yeah. It's been a little while since I got the Tin Man. Hey, we reached a new cycle. Oh, that means we actually made it to um, conveyors. We need to unlock conveyors big time. That's going to help us a ton. Free up some labor, too. What do we need to research that? Conveyor system, we need basic machinery. 28,700, jeez. Oh, we're almost there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a canned food too, but it's showing bronze there for some... I guess I was wrong. And we got a lot of food, a lot of food. Paper's crazy. Maybe we'll tone down paper, I don't know. We'd always switch paper reduction over to planks if we really need to. Oh my god, they all got trained. It must have increased the percent chance of that because during the alpha, I would sometimes put five people through there like three different times and get one of them coming out as a uh, specialist. So that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. All right, so we do want to get the, um, oops. the iron started over here. Leave a gap for conveyors later. And we found a uh, area with abundant resources. So once we get to the point where we're able to really pump resources from the outside world here, the world map will be in good shape. Power is still good. Probably shouldn't have put uh, unlimited on a lot of these resources, but all right. Uh, so what else do we need? Oh, we need the distillery. That's right. We need two of those actually. Two distilleries. Um. One for medicine, one for beer. There are tasks that people do, and when will you unlock them? So we just got to the cycle that we can use them. So basically the different specialists have different buildings that they, there are some buildings that putting them in isn't required, but doing so increases the production of the building. And then there are some buildings that just require that worker type. So uh, the specialist, which is what they're actually called, is, um, is needed for some of the more advanced stuff later on. Like the craftsman. So a good example of the craftsman one is like um, the clothing place. We can take the craftsman out, but the amount they produce drops to half. 
So just having to craft it in there, but it still works without them. Whereas like the, um, the smelter, you have to have them in there or it can't function. Okay, smelter. Got those going now. Iron ingots are flowing again. We're on bronze. We can wait on tin, I think, right? Yeah, let's use that for bronze right now. Okay, get these done. Uh, we're going to need two specialists for here. So let's try to get... Police trained. And then we need to get basic machinery done. The problem with getting basic machinery, or problem, I guess, is once we get basic machinery researched, the craftsmen are actually going to want power tools every day for their tool type. And so we probably should have got ahead of that a little bit. But, uh, oh well. How's the medical supply access looking for the... Uh, it's looking like there's none at the moment. <laughs> but, oh crap, I need to get herbs going again too. We're still only on simple meals. We have the means to make better meals, but oh well, we're going to have to suck it up for now. Suck it up. Right now, it's, yeah, rub some dirt on it. Yeah. All right. So medicine. Uh, we need, we need, uh, we need three of these. I forgot. So we need to make alcohol. Oh, I didn't switch these over to grain. I'm going to switch one to grain after we finish the uh, clothing quest. All right, so alcohol on that one, medicine on this one. Then I'm gonna need a third one of these. I'm not so sure building the way I have this time is a is a good way to do it. Honestly, the more more. We've been going here. This one it oh my god, fire. Uh what is it? Full response is gonna lower our worker production for a couple days, but I don't want the fire to spread. Fire spreading is pretty not great, as you would probably have guessed. We don't want that too in range of the other things that are using water, so... Uh, hey, both got it done here. Looks neat, it's good, yeah. Good so far. Uh, if you want to help me out or just see what the game's about, typing exclamation what and going to that video that I made. Uh, I just released it a few hours ago. This game just hit early access a few hours ago. It goes over what the game is, its system, shows some of the later stuff. Oh, campfires, are you a teepee or log cabin? Messy stack? Teepee, yeah. I usually do the teepee method, yet. Yeah. I actually did that during the fall last year when we... Uh, my daughter hadn't roasted marshmallows before, so I made a campfire and we roasted marshmallows. Huge mineral deposit. Nice. So we can secure this stuff out here. It's going to be really nice. That's just how I've always done it. I know it's a pretty decent way to do it. Hey, we can actually just repair that. So that's good. Uh, Iron ore. Oh, right, right, right. And paper production is like through the friggin' roof, so. We're gonna turn that down a little bit. All kind of built around a teepee. <laughs> All right, does that mean we're out of iron at this collection place over here? No, it's just that we're using so much of it. Basic machinery is done. Uh, now we need two more of these guys. Where can I even pull the workers out right now? We're going to need people at the farms. Yeah, we need a lot more people. Uh, again, though, we can pull some paper out. Paper production out right now. 
Okay. Just to make sure this is not completely unoccupied, we want to throw at least one person into these. This one is on herbs. Uh, we'll put this one on herbs right now, too. Yeah, these are important to get going. Uh, so let's see if we get two more of these guys. Burn tunnel. <laughs> Make little marshmallow people to go through the burn tunnel. Okay, so let's go grain on both of those and linen on those. Teach my daughter how to make a burn tunnel for marshmallow people. Sure, that's, is that great parenting or the best parenting? Uh, I need to put some more people on that as well. Uh, Clay, we're actually not great on clay. I think we're really good on... We good on sand? I don't really need a ton of glass right now anyway. Okay. Fantastic parenting. <laughs> People are shit or walk into the burn tunnel. Yeah, just uh, make sure you don't have all closed doors. All right. Uh, so the reason why the electricity went down is because work efficiency has dropped because we were putting out a fire. All right, so um, we need to get more workers in these. And right now I know there's like no production coming out of there, but... And then we also need to upgrade the tavern to a pub. We need iron ingots for that. Yeah, we are... Really need to get into those conveyors. How close are we to getting there? 204. Yeah, we need a lot of iron to get there. It's very important, though. So we need to save for that. Uh, How are we doing on coal? So we might can change the production over here temporarily. 10, 295. We have a lot of copper. Hmm. We have 6,800 coal. Okay, so temporarily. In fact, I'm going to change this so we can keep a better eye on coal. Temporarily, we're going to switch this over to iron. All right. Did she like it? Yeah, yeah, she liked it. She kept talking about how pretty the fire was. I was like, yeah, but it is dangerous, so don't, don't fall in or whatever. Let down your guard too much. Turns into a pyro. That's pretty. You played against the storm. Will you get back to play it again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I still plan on coming back to against the storm. It might not be until early next week, though. It's got a really big or a really busy weekend and um, several like required things to play. Uh, do sponsorships and things like that. But yeah, yeah. More against the storm is coming for sure. I ask you for a piece of advice. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words. Glad you glad you liked the stream. So I wanted to upgrade more houses too, but we gotta we gotta wait. Like in storm, yeah, against storm's really good. So these are just her finding small nodes that we can later connect to. So we're just sending her around everywhere. Can you do it again? Sure. All right, starting to produce all that. Firmary, okay. Oh, we actually have stone deposit still right there. All right, anything that's not producing anymore. I need to keep an eye on... Uh, yeah, neither of those are, because we've reached the 
app on it or there might yeah match storage so i need to switch this one over to power tools anyway oh we don't have motor production yet that's right so we'll just take these down to a low amount of workers put those elsewhere at least have something there uh and let's look at this efficiency here so yeah the craftsmen want the power tools now we really got to get power tool thank you to get to the point where you can interact with chat consistently twitch have a hard time talking to yourself so i guess i was fortunate because i used to work as a uh, manager in a call center and one of the things on calls with clients is there could be no dead air like if there was more than like three or four seconds of dead air it was counted against you at the company and so you had to find ways to keep talking and keep saying things so what so I had that kind of practice, but basically I just tried to always explain what I was doing. You don't necessarily need to do that. There are some streams where people don't talk as much, even with low viewer count, but it does seem to help when new people come in, if you're already uh, kind of talking. So I would say just try to explain the reasoning behind what you're doing. That's what I did anyway. So like very early on when I had like 10 people, no one was talking and I was playing like Darkest Dungeon. I would explain the process of why I was doing everything and when I didn't have a reason to explain the process, I was still narrating what I was doing, basically, which some people will find annoying, but so it just depends on who, what kind of people you want to attract to the stream. Um, but I did that, and that way it also enabled people to be able to lurk while they were playing, and then they would know when to look over and stuff when they actually wanted to see what was going on. So for me, I kind of already had that gab training, and then I just kind of implemented that with... Um, explaining what I was doing and why I was doing things. Jeremy looks so simple until you try doing it yourself, interacting while playing. You're a salesman, you ignore that law to a degree, yeah. All right, iron ingots. Man, we are just really in need to get those ingots done. Um. crazy um the only way we can get more efficiency on it right now is to get craftsmen their power tools okay so for power tools i think we need a metal works to make more motors uh right now we have a metal work going with steel how are we doing with steel uh wow we have no clay might need another clay pit Uh, you know what? I'm not too worried about paper. Let's keep a closer eye on steel here. We have 541. Uh, yeah, let's make another one. Yeah, there's lots of ways to do streams and to be successful on stream. I can only speak for the ways that I've done things, right? Okay, let's switch over to motors. And we really need those iron ingots. Why so many dusty roads? Uh, it increases production. We haven't unlocked better road types. So. Here as well. That isn't real. This could help a lot. <laughs> Tinder streaming for blind people. Mm -hmm. I game like Isaac or Hades. Yeah, I did do a lot of uh, Hades streaming and I would still try to talk throughout, especially when I got to like decision making parts, like why I'm choosing which boon and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to switch this over just for a little bit to try to build up some ingots. And... <laughs> uh, switch all these to iron. Hey, motor's going. Gotta get those conveyors done. Gonna help out so much. 33 to 50. We're not super far away. Wow, 
Wow, that's the first time we've consumed more water than we're producing for those wells, but I don't think it's a big deal. So again, if you play this game, I highly recommend just putting a well a, down for every single water, individual water spot like this. Only have one connected to it. In the long run, it seems better. Which this might be something they change, honestly. It seems better than the upgraded water pump, and it doesn't take any labor for some reason. It's just wells out in the middle of nowhere, just automated. I don't know why. It just are. Uh, We could force some more labor out of these guys. Uh, we're going to need some more specialists too, though. Maybe. Can this run without them? Nope. We'll put those two in here. Recording a try for fun a couple times. It's weird to imagine someone watching play differently. Another thing I did very early on is I also turned off viewer counts because very early on when I was in like single digits, like zero to two people or whatever, I found that when I saw the viewer number go up to three, even if I really didn't feel or think that, or even if I didn't really think this way, when I saw the viewer number go up to three and then it went back down to two, it was almost like a, like a mental hit. So it was like, oh man, someone just left because they didn't like the stream, which might not be the case, you know, who knows why they left. So, highly recommend turning off viewer count. Uh, very early on, I like disabled viewer count and just pretended like there's 100 people here all the time. T to this day, I don't have viewer count visible during the stream. I check viewer counts at the end of stream. But... All right, motors. Motors. Out of consequence, uh-oh. Tens of us. As our city is adorned with more mighty structures, the lives of people in the shadows seem to be becoming more and more insignificant. Accidents are inevitable in life, intertwined with machines, and we experience them almost every day. Every new structure we build for more complex and high-scale production creates new risks for people. We should think of precaution against these risks. We can't keep passing over them by calling them work accidents. Or can we? We can plan for regular checks in some complex production facilities, We'd establish specific safety criteria and control conditions and appoint officials to check them at regular intervals. This controlled progress will, of course, lead to some losses and costs, but it is an approach that can guarantee the integrity and con continuity of our structures, as well as the lives of the people working in them. So a reasonable suggestion for the regulation of occup occupational safety and working conditions, the community will prepare and come up with a proposal for a transparent arrangement or no. All right, we'll go with the good. We're we're being the good guys this time. Monk, thank you for the eight months. Thank you, Monk. Yeah, OSHA or no OSHA? OSHA or no OSHA? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, what is this? Chief, it is as we feared. Our findings paint a picture of a doomed future. Not too far from today. The studies and the environmental factors we've been tracking definitely point to a global scale atmospheric shift. Of course, we haven't been tracking for long, so we can't make entirely accurate assumptions. We all know what the first solar storm did to our civilization. Rainfall is decreasing day by day. We're experiencing drier and longer summers. We seem to be reliving the sequence of events that turned half the planet into a wasteland. We may be facing an even more dire event at this time, though we can't know how dire for sure. The only thing we do know is that many locations across Earth, including our settlement, will rapidly deteriorate to the point where they will no longer be able to support human life. We're rapidly moving toward a state where we won't be able to grow crops and not a drop of rain will fall. We may even have to face consequences that we can't yet imagine. We don't have an answer to that right now. We have to think through the likely scenarios, assess our situation, and work to find a solution. In the process, we need to decide how to divulge this knowledge to the community. Everyone has the right to know. Hope that people handle it well. Work in secrecy, spreading this around will lead to no good. All we have are a few measurements. Return when you have more. I'm going to let people know. What's the worst that could happen? I'm sure it's people are going to get pretty unhappy, but... You might say, why why drum up this worry if there's nothing we can do about it, you know? Nah, they'll find out some way or another. 
Let's 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 tell them. We'll see what happens. For sure, stream. Some people want to be entertained. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different there's a lot of different ways to be a streamer and to succeed in it. And there's no right way. And the same thing, viewers. I remember uh, back when I was doing like the world first record on minus 35 morale for 15 days. I remember when I was doing the world record thing on Darkest Dungeon and I was explaining what I was doing. And sometimes I'd have people come in and they would be like, does this guy ever actually play the game? <laughs> Excuse me. No, I only talk and hiccup into the microphone. Nothing else. But yeah, um, one of the things I suggest for people that are wanting to start streaming, whether it's for a hobby or for a living eventually, or, you know, anywhere in between, is try to cultivate the community you want to eventually have from the beginning. More workers, okay. How are we doing on housing? We need more housing upgraded. We actually have some iron coming in now, so we're going to upgrade some of these. Okay. It's a lecture-only stream, yeah. Depends. All right, scouts. So that makes me think we might want to put our water even higher. Like... There might be a time where we have to survive, like, years with little water, so screw it. It's basically putting no limit on water collection. <laughs> Alright, it's good enough. Nicole, welcome in. Conveyors! Conveyors! It's obstacle. What, what? Oh. Okay. Conveyors are getting. All right, we're get we're getting to conveyors. Uh, now we are going through the iron ore faster than we can process it here. So we're gonna put these two back to copper. Actually, we'll do three of them. Seal, mixer bottles, the drinks with it depends engraved on it. Most worth thinking of streaming and acting is how you respond to people and be honest with yourself as well. Uh, I think we're going to need another pit. Oh, God. We're going to need more power than we're going to need. Here we go. All right. Another pit. Another pit sometime. Um... Okay, we finished that one. How long until we can send out another envoy? We can do that already. Yeah, let's do it. Safety precautions. Come on. We prepared two roadmaps, one with a more complete approach and the other more lax. We can take one of these two paths to reduce the likelihood of accidents in workplaces, prevent fatal workplace accidents, and reduce the likelihood of related disasters such as fires and explosions. Craftsmen's, uh, craftsmen's are, the uh, craftsmen are designated as control officers. Extra work is involved, taking time away from their other duties. Buildings may temporarily stop working during inspection and control operations. More resources will be committed to maintenance, increasing the proportion of wire, glass, and metals used for maintenance. Safety first, plus eight morale, minus 15 workforce for craftsmen. Plus 65 attraction, that means more people coming to the town, which is nice, especially because we took one that's like a minus 20 already. Reduces the probability of work accidents, and some advanced structures decrease slightly. Minus 10 efficiency. Efficiency first. Minus morale. Minus workforce craftsmen. Increased probability of work accidents. Or do none of it. I think I'm going to increase the um, attraction. So I'm feeling like in the long run, as long as we can make it to the eventual part where we have automation, this won't matter, right? We'll, we'll rather have attraction and morale at that stage if we can make it there. Bobby, you're probably doing it for your friends as well. Yeah, yeah, or any communities that you're, uh, you're involved in, yeah. How cost is it to lose craftsmen, though? I'm not sure how it will be in the long run. 
Yeah. Uh, the good thing is the Krasin aren't in charge of our very basic needs like food, um, clothing, or tools. So it might stunt our growth for more advanced things in the short term. But I think in the long term, this is probably what we should do. And, uh, and how are we doing on coal? We still have a lot of coal. So we're gonna, that one's on iron. Okay. Man, when that conveyor is done, since it's to replace them. Oh, okay. So you need a person and then it takes five tools and 200 paper to try to train them into a craftsman. So not too bad. Morale is at an all time low right now because of this. Uh, and that put our power under. Okay. Whoops. Demo should do more loot and stuff so we can spam it. Uh, 562. Um, let's deactivate one of these. Actually, we can deactivate both for, for a minute until we get that online over there. 15 more days on that. Okay. Oh, I'll be so glad this research is done. Yeah, the iron need is crazy right now. Iron need is really crazy. Ah, uh, we gotta keep an eye on cold, though. Another message. Chief, our people are proud of this life they have built. We got this far under your leadership. Each year has been a challenge, and we have a long way to go. We have no alternative but to keep our spirits high, and we have an idea that might make things a little easier. We want to celebrate this cycle of growth every year with a short break like the festivals in our ends. Now they wanted a day off every nine days of every 10 days. And now they're wanting a holiday each year. If you see fit, we can organize a cycle celebration at certain times every year. Well, of course, come at a cost. It's up to you whether you want to take this action or not. The manager action is activated, allowing us to organize a cycle celebration at certain times of the year where we can give away food, water and drinks to boost morale. Yeah, all right. Weekends and now holidays. What's what's next? What's next? Human rights are coming next or something. Crazy. So need to upgrade more of these houses. I think I'm just going to put down uh, freaking iron. I think I'm just going to throw two of them down. That way, at least I can go ahead and place them. Two two day work week coming up. <laughs> All right, come on, conveyors. And tool production is halted as well. Uh, we should probably turn those eventually into metalworks right now we don't have the anyway i probably should have just upgraded these uh moving those up there but whatever whatever we can fix that stuff later that's for future us to worry about right conveyors do take a lot of power though so zero production today yeah i know i know we'll get back to it hopefully is here oh my god whoops uh, okay thing is they're not getting those built because the iron needs um all right can't do any of those for right now anyway all right, the new pits.
Be glad it's not the universe with the ovens to farm people for the town. <laughs> this greedy bunch. Yeah. You're lucky we're not on a rim world. Hey, conveyors. Oh, thank goodness. Do we have the stuff to make them? Um, One steel each. Yes. So we have to upgrade these in order to do that, though. Which one do we want to upgrade? Upgrade the iron one first. Of course, it's going to need iron ingots. How's our production? What do you want? What do you want, community? Chief, with one bold new initiative, we can bring tremendous power to our entire infrastructure. We have access to plenty of resources, but we need more advanced production facilities to process them at higher yields. That's true. Such advanced structures could work more autonomously than what we can currently achieve, reducing the human component in production. Yes, during much more processing power. We achieve and even sustain this power by keeping the resources in a continuous flow through a network of conveyor belts. Yes, that's what I'm working on. In addition to the cost of developing such an infrastructure, we need to make sure we plan out the layout and logistics of the conveyor belts, including their power consumption with utmost care. Now nah, we're just going to shove it wherever it'll fit. Hmm. Shove it where it'll fit. That's my, my plan. Well, oh, look at that. 20,000 resources in there. 20,000 resources. Uh... Man, we are still consuming much more of that. How, though? What, what all is... The tools? Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe it hasn't updated yet. So I turn those off. Minus 20 health. Uh, again, we could move the farm labor, but... Let's upgrade this one. As soon as we can. Yeah, there we go. Now it's updated. Wait, I wonder... Can I have both of these pulling from that? Oh my god. I thought it was one per node for some reason. <laughs> I think it might have been like that during one of the alpha phases or something. Rim factory mod. That's kind of cool, yeah. Almost there. Come on. Come on, hit that 94 again. You were there for a second. No, are they in tr transit elsewhere? Wait, do we not? Oh my god, we haven't done this. We have 275 to do the research. Jesus. End of year nine, okay. This guy playing the violin, everyone's, everyone's sad. Storm grade, welcome in. All right, production. We gotta be careful about uh, this meat and stuff too. Person threw you in there. Ah, now we're pumping down iron. Nice. Oops. Two seventy-five. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, we're so glad to get this done. The mass grinder. Actually becomes spring. Yes, yeah, there's a season cycle yet. See what our place looks like at night these days. Good. Excellent. Funny about they produce medical stuff to a dock. Uh yeah, yeah, I know, but I got other more important things. They can wait on a doctor. Health is good right now because of our other policies, so I don't, I don't really care. I have medicine, but no doctor. They'll just have to have to deal with it. Um, max storage of alcohol to you.
pulls people off there temporarily. Also, don't want to upgrade stockpiles yet either. Just keep using these for now. Something for future us to worry about. Otherwise. Apple Day keeps the dock away. Darn enough. We haven't... It takes a long time to get to the cycle where you get apples. Very advanced. Very advanced. Okay, let's see here. So, we want to switch one of these back over to copper now. How many people we got there? I need to go around and check the uh, production sometimes, too. Thank you for the look. Thank you for the eyes. As soon as that research is done, we're going to upgrade one of these. Okay, we can turn the steel production back on. And therefore, motor production. Oh, crap. It's been inactive for too long. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll come back to this. Uh, let's double check resources here. That one can't make any more right now. It's because of a limit, but I don't think there's many people working there. This one is out of that iron. Okay, so that finally happened. Let's pull those people out of there. Uh, this one... Ah, they're still getting meat. There's no one there getting mushrooms. Might want to start working on getting more, uh, more meat, too. Look, we have no one buried in the cemetery yet? Really? Oh, we have one person. Still only that one death, huh? Okay. Alright, more people coming. Need to get these upgraded as another step, but conveyors first. Lurk in time. Thank you for the lurk. Need to get more houses upgraded. Uh, what does it take for these? Yeah. All right. Starting to get pretty, pretty good on all this. So. Okay. You know what? If we have the stuff, let's just not have shacks anymore. Okay, there we go. And this is still helping with iron at the moment. Coal is not really needed, although we might do another coal plant sometime before super long. Um, And once we get the conveyor system done, so this is more efficient, we're going to see if we have extra work that we can put out on the map. Okay. Back. We'll see what the other zone is that we were already developing. What else they had there. Uh, there is food there. So, 38 food production for two workers. Let's go ahead and build this so that we have the options for those. And eventually, we'll be able to get a railway over there. Aries don't go up there. I'm watching you. But I want to turn the computer off. I know you do. You do. There we go. Nice. Hey! Finally. Dry summer, yeah. Alright. And some people grew up. Let's go ahead and go look through the labor here. Those are still good. These are maybe a little overstaffed. So we can't make a lot right there. That's linen... We're fine on overall. I guess we can just check. Uh, let's see. We're not fine on linen. Okay. So that's where those new people will go. Uh, what else? This. Oh, 
Oh, and this is the first time we're going to need the actual specialist. So I need to, uh, I need to work on that. Have we even unlocked that yet? I don't think it needs her to run. It needs it to be more efficient. Theoretical training. There we go. Theoretical training. So is it real training or not? Okay, found more water source. Again, we're just kind of exploring the whole world map slowly with that one scout. Oh, can we go ahead and build this ahead of time? Looks like we can. Uh, so let's get off the grid system with that. Okay. Yeah, 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 I know. Go away, tree. So we're going to need more electricity. Yeah, I think we are going to end up having to get the uh, second coal plant. I really want to get that, but... Uh, or we can throw down more windmills for now. I mean, we have those resources. Uh, not a lot, though. Not a lot. So we'll destroy all that. Probably. Uh, specialists, we have reached a time that requires a lot of expertise. The craftsmen and workers are very good at their job. However, we need a more advanced knowledge for mechanized production facilities and systems. Train a new class of workers who can take on this responsibility and put our infrastructures for autonomous mass production in their charge. For this purpose, the priority should be to build a vocational training center. All right, yeah, we're already on that. Already working towards that. Uh, you can make the um, conveyors much more vertical, change their height, do all kinds of stuff with them. I guess I can show that. Shift scroll, I think, yeah. Oh crap, I didn't get it connected. <laughs> Whoops. I guess I shouldn't have uh, changed the height. Whoops. I think that's leading in there. Keep forgetting to hit, uh, hold shift. There we go. There we go. And uh, now we just need workers put on there. Okay. Iron. 31 a day until we get her going. Okay. 99 a day. Okay. There we go. So, already producing more than these should help quite a bit. But we gotta get the vocational school down. Which we are researching now. Small success, plus 20 morale to all classes. Nice. Robot workers, too many meat bags eventually. We put together a rough estimate of the sequence of expected atmospheric changes. Based on the information we have, a global increase in temperature and the uh, decertification of land masses will be followed over time by a complete breakdown of the structural integrity of the atmosphere. 
some point, the planet will lose the ability to house oxygen, keep water in a liquid state. Earth is on track to become a dead piece of rock. So leaving it behind and launching into a, the unknown of space would be a partial solution. We don't have the resources, the knowledge, or the time for such a massive undertaking. What? <laughs> uh, this has expanded a little bit since what I did in the in the alpha. We can neither escape nor rectify the situation, but we can take steps to reserve life and the continuity of our species. Perhaps as the atmospheric balance fluctuates, we'll stabilize again and we can go back to our old way of life. For now, though, we can migrate slightly further north to lands that will be eroded more slowly. However, this will hardly give us time to rebuild what we'll be leaving behind, much less allow us to survive the catastrophe. More permanent, albeit more challenging solution would be to build an underground bunker in our current location while we're still producing at full capacity. We can think of it as a gigantic underground city that will house the future of our species and perhaps of all life around us. Interesting. Make like robots, have them replace us, profit. That would be nice, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's actually robots, but there is uh, automation you can get to that isn't, of course, robots. Um, We still have a lot of food, but we are eating just about as much as we're producing. We're not going positive in meat, although we are still gathering mushrooms that we're not even converting. So I don't, I'm not too worried about food yet. Big thing right now is getting uh, our first specialist. Also, let's take a look in here. Yeah, we're, are we still not creating those? That's right. I need to remake these. Um, yeah, I don't want the minus efficiency, so as much as it sucks, I'm just going to demolish it. We'll get some of our resources back. And... General Workshop. Steadily increasing. Uh, I don't know. They said that the atmosphere is going to be screwed over and void of oxygen. I don't know. At least in some kind of cycle. Everything is a cycle, though. All right, huge mineral deposit. That's nice when we eventually get to the point where we can pull stuff from the world map more readily. Speaking of, we did go ahead and make some buildings up here, so we don't need those activated right now, though. But for the future, those are set up, and we got a storm coming. Now yeah, we're pumping those out. But travelers approach our settlement. Foreigners, they'll probably want to join and be workers. There's also a merchant here already. Yeah, we don't need any of that. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, entertainment. Uh, right. We need to get the tavern upgraded to a pub. Also, there's one house not covered. Oh, Jesus. Oh, minus 35 workforce. Yeah, that's a big drop. Holy crap. Um, Some buildings are not going to work during that. I think we're okay, though. I was going to get another one of those anyway. Ugh. More people. I'm actually thinking about getting rid of that house rather than making another one of these. Although these are not staffed, so it's not a big deal. You can also go straight to... No. no, we can't go straight to pub. Yeah, screw it. Strangers, 13 people, okay. All right, uh, that research is done. And I'm going to end up needing even more smelters. Crazy enough. Okay, uh, which one is this under? Technical boot camp. There it is. 
Higher level training structures needed, so we'd have to upgrade this one. Wire and iron ingots. Yeah, we're going to need more of this. More of all this production. Now the wire is being sent over to this new coal generator, though. Dipsy! Thank you for the resub, Dipsy. Welcome back. Two months. Appreciated. Mad Monk, thank you for the eight months. Spudman, I missed the 50 bits somehow. Thank you, Spudman. <laughs> I don't know if you're still here, but... Be Mad Monk and Dipsy. Yeah, we're gonna have to get some more smelters out. I mean, we have the workforce now, so... Stream done. I'll probably be wrapping up pretty soon, especially since we end up having to go today. I would have went a little bit longer today, but I think we need to have to wrap it up. So there was soon. All right, we can put more workers on there when we need even more power. It's fine for now. All right, so we have just got to our first automation with the conveyor belts, and we're going to be working on getting um, getting our first actual specialist in. So I think that's a pretty good stopping spot. We got up to the tier two on the mine. There is a tier three we haven't unlocked yet. Let's see how close we are to the next cycle. We are five people away and quite a bit of knowledge away, and the next cycle is a really huge one. Getting to the points where you have, uh, like, diesel and train stations is, uh, pretty game-changing. All this is gonna be looking very, very different before long. Alright. I'll save it there, and, uh, we'll continue at a later time. Also, maybe the pet store. Look at friends. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it when I finish the stream. Or you can click the link in the description on the YouTube live stream. Uh, but yeah, check that out. Check that out. Interact with it if you if you would. That's what the developers are really looking at. So views on that, likes on that, comments, stuff like that. So, um, and if you want to check out New Cycle, it's in early access as of today on Steam. So I don't think it's available anywhere else at the moment. I looked on Humble, but it looks like it's just on Steam right now. Anyway, I'm going to revisit this because I want to get to the part of the game that I like the most, which is the late game when you have the train going and lots of automation. I don't know why, but it's... I mean, all right. Uh, it's just the part I enjoy the most of the game. Uh, also, tomorrow I'm supposed to do a stream, but uh, we've had something come up where I might have to start late or end early or maybe can't even stream tomorrow. I'll let you guys know in the Discord. Uh, but yeah, I'll wrap things up for now. I'll let you know the Discord. At the very latest, I'll be here on uh, Sunday for RimWorld. So that's it for me. Thank you again for hanging out. Have a good rest of your day or night. Whatever it is where you are, I will see you next time, which might be tomorrow, but if not, uh, guaranteed on, on Sunday. <laughs>